Listen, you fat boy. Oh, wow. You come up the stairs and start the podcast. First of all, you're 10 minutes late. I forgot to feed Brando. Uh huh. So I went back up and I got him his rabbit. And then you fed yourself a cookie. You know, I can't deny myself a chunky Chips Ahoy on a rant. When I haven't had any sugar today. You know what I mean? I haven't had sugar today. I said, this will be the one cookie. This was my cheat. My little moment of cheat. My little moment to stimulate my brain a little bit with some uh-huh, sugar. Uh-huh. I was thinking about the pod. I was thinking about yeah. being better for the pod. Uh-huh. And it wasn't even your cookie. It'd be one thing if you pulled over at an Arco and got a little pack of Chips Ahoy. You stole this household's cookies from their kitchen, didn't he, Austin? Yeah, that's yeah I, up, did. I did. You know what's funny? I, every time I do steal food from this place, it, d- it does feel like stealing from like maybe like a homeless shelter, you know, in a way. Because, sure. you know, Port Adino was, has been surviving on bread and peanut butter mm-hmm. for weeks. Mm-hmm. And t- Chips Ahoy, those could have been like his like calories for the, you know, like his little extra calories so he breaks even for the day and mm-hmm. he doesn't lose any mm-hmm. weight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead, I, I did rob him of the ability to lose, to like gain weight today. Yeah, and on the one hand, it's like, woohoo, because Leo kept you from ingesting poison, essentially, Dino. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, because we might find Dino dead in his bedroom. And Leo's going to get diabetes sooner. Leo, you are going to hit a wall at 40, buddy. You think so? You keep I- stuffing these chips ahoy in your face. It's going to end bad. You know, I agree with you, until, but then I meet people like, Fez Cubed, for example, and his daily routine of five to six cans of cola. Yeah. He, ad- he admitted to oh me that's God. actually his routine. Oh, my Plus, God. he eats d- two Subway cookies. Plus, like, every day? At the, yeah, every day, dude. He doesn't eat the sandwiches. He just goes in there for the cookies. He eats yeah. the sandwiches, too, but then he does what? go in there for the cookies. I mean, Austin, the cookies wait, wait, wait. Oh. Austin said, yeah, to my thing. So he does. He doesn't eat the sandwich. I've never seen him get a sandwich. I've wow. only seen him. Wow, wow, Leo. He told me he had a ham and cheese. He was lying. He was lying, dude. He's a lying Austin, Austin, the shop next Austin door. Austin follows that bowling ball around the mm-hmm. city, and you see him go into Subway purely for the cookie. He goes in for the cookie, and then he goes in and gets a croissant and a milkshake at the donut shop. That is something to behold. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, he already is pre-diabetic. I don't have any fear of being a diabetic. I don't Uh drink soda. You know, that really is the, that's how you become a diabetic is drinking soda. Uh So I'm good. This Uh is black coffee. You know this is black coffee. You see, you, right now, that argument that you're using, I'm going to say this really quickly. Fez Cubed, the large man, I had the image suddenly in my head of one of those shows they used to do on Spike TV where there were slow motion cameras and they had some douchey experiment going on. I would love to see you hit him as hard as you could with a baseball bat. Oh. Shirtless in slow motion. Oh, uh, just <laughs> his belly. <laughs> but Leo, you saying you don't drink soda. Mm-hmm. That's like, I remember rest in peace, Justin Tampas. Justin Tampas, rest in peace, from my high school reunion. I included him, some would say heartlessly, in my speech I made in the immortal high school reunion video. I remember he bragged to me once that um, he, uh, the reason he could keep taking painkillers recreationally was because that was his only vice. Uh. <laughs> he was like, I just, I take some Norcos and Oxys. And I take some Vivance and some Valiums, but that's all I do. Like, I don't drink it. Which, first of all, it wasn't true. He did smoke and drink also. Oh. But the point, Leo, is that Justin Tampas was eventually ended by a methadone pill. You eventually are going to be ended by Chips Ahoy. You think Chips Ahoy is going to be my downfall? Mm-hmm. Might be the canola oil in Chips Ahoy. I agree with you. Dude, I, I listened. A podcast popped up on my feed, and I listened to it, and it was a Stanford doctor who used to be a part of the food lobby and he called multiple times the food industry and the medical industry evil everything we eat that includes seed oils processed grains or sugars is terrible for us yeah for our physical body for our mental health it's all awful and i tried an experiment leo going into a gas station while i was on the road filming this weekend looking for anything to eat that didn't include one of those ingredients Mm -hmm. All you can find are the bananas by the register and sunflower seeds. Damn. Everything else has poisonous ingredients. I know. It's it's terrible. I mean, like Chipotle, we, we think it's eaten clean on the road, right? We've said that. Like, you know, we think it is, but it's obviously they're using seed oils to cook. I think so. It, it, it's unfortunately, I think it started way back when they, they used to cook with animal fat for a long time. Mm. 
And then all of a sudden, th- this seed oil like craze came in, and s- somebody wants to make a lot of money, and now they change like all the fries. There are no more animal fat fries. You know, they were, it used to be a lot better for you when it was just animal fat. Yeah, you could still get fat, but it wasn't going to clog your arteries. Mm. So I mean, you can counter, you can ca- you could fight it with fasting and and doing a lot of cardio uh-huh. or like look like working out a lot yeah That's neither it, of right? what you do uh the, uh, not true i do do a lot of cardio a lot of fasting you know i do a lot of cardio and i fast too yeah uh-huh i fast when's the last time you fasted like yesterday i didn't eat till like 3 p.m oh wow yeah i don't believe that first of all but also and wow a giant Italian you're a natural meal. muslim during ramadan you're right Leo. dude uh, you probably woke up he's admitting this fact you probably woke up at one i woke up around noon wow three hours <laughs> And he's lying. You know he had his first meal at like 1.45. And that was because he was jerking off. I jerked off till about 1.45, stayed in bed, got up, took a little walk, Uh and I had my first meal. And what was that meal? It was a giant Italian, like, it was a Postmate, you know. Um, I Postmated some Italian Taroni in West Hollywood, a very Uh good place. I had a lemon and with lemon cello pasta, which was like uh, it had lemon and like capers and some uh, Parmesan cheese. Mm. And uh, then I had a lot, some bread and olives. Nice. And then I had a side salad. Mm. How much did it. this cost? Um, like a 70 bucks. I wish Jesus. you I wish you would have finished the meal with the a muzzle of a pistol. In your mouth, I was, I was, you wanted you want me to? <laughs> I wish you would have ate a, ate a pistol, yeah. you wanted, and, and then shoot myself in the head. In the mouth, yeah, so sort of in the head. I uh, yeah, talking about shooting people in the head. I've been watching The Sopranos, and yeah. uh, there are so many bullet holes to the head, dude. Mm. So many bullets to the head, dude. What a great show! I'm on season two. I, right. I've never I've never watched it before, and now I'm a huge fan. Better than Mad Men. It's not better than Mad Men, but okay. it is it is really really good. I think the same creator or one of the creators. So, yeah, it went over to Mad Men. Uh, but what I can say about it is that it's hilarious, though, too. There's like the nicknames. Like there's a guy named Pussy Malanga. They they have a strip club that Tony cleans his money at. It's he owns. It's called Bada Bing. Mm. And they have like th- every episode, at least one like episode, uh, one, uh, you know, th- 40 second shot of like titties and ass at the strip club. That's all you need. Yeah, it's more than you need. Yeah, it's more than I need. Yeah, I uh, yeah, Leo. I feel like uh, you need something like that every time you're watching a program to remind you that you're not gay or it's not gay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just no to remind myself of what's important in life. But it, it don't, I don't have to because Tony Soprano. Every time he sees one of his guys, one of the first things he says is, "Hey, you gained a little weight. You get laid recently. Uh-huh. Yeah, you fucking have you, you want some pussy?" Uh-huh. Then he offers him one of the bada uh-huh. bing girls. You uh-huh. know? One guy got out of jail 10 years. He goes, I don't want you to say anything. You've been laid recently. And he sends him over to get a blowjob. He's like, go get your dick sucked. So Tony Soprano and what's the guy from Mad Men? Don Draper. Don Draper. Two pretty much identical characters. Just one's got a little bit more blood on his hand. But they are both staunch pussy hounds. Leo. They are, yeah. Tony, got- Tony's got a Russian slit on the side. That's what he calls her. I got slit. My, my Russian slit. I like that. It's yeah. slot, but with a different letter. Mm-hmm. You like the show Entourage, too. Do you like any programs where there isn't a leading man who cheats? No, uh, you told me I need to watch uh, California Cation because he gets a You're gonna ton love of pussy, it. dude. You're going to love it. He's got a wife or an ex-wife that he still loves, and he fucks a lot of other chicks. <laughs> this is Okay, I have always been one of the guys. I looked up, like when I was a freshman in high school, I looked up to the guys that got a lot of pussy. Were you not one of the, Did you not look up to dudes that get a lot of pussy? I, mean, I wouldn't say I looked up to them. I wanted to be in their place, yeah. but they were all just dumb-faced guys on the football team. Uh, we, had, we had, like, legit, like... Like Israeli guys that were like ladies men at Grand High School. It was like like you like a good looking like Middle Eastern dude that could mm-hmm. just pull a lot of tail. Like mm-hmm. We had guys like that. They were didn't play any sports. Mm-hmm. They were like smoking cigarettes and shit. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, yeah, Israelis, dude. Yeah, Israelis are shady. Israelis are uh, very racist too. I've heard. Is that true? I mean, Jews. I've I've encountered some Jews in my day that have been a little bit racist. Yeah, you know, what I mean? you know I, if you have a Holocaust, you can be as racist as you want. I Armenians, agree. for instance, they are racist. Yeah, they can be as racist as they want mm-hmm. because the Turks did some bad stuff to them. Mm-hmm. The Germans put the Jews in an oven. You can like make a snotty comment about a black guy slowly crossing the street if your grandfather got put in an oven. 
A hundred percent. Right? Now, do you yeah, think there's think a difference so. between, like, I've always kind of noticed, like, this movie reminds me of this fact, too, The Green Book, where there's an Italian guy that ends up taking a gay black guy through the South back in, like, I think it was, like, the 40s when it was uh-huh. really dangerous. And he takes him through the South to do, like, uh, you know, he was a pianist, and he's doing, like, a tour in the South, and he wanted to do it, whatever. Actually, it might have taken place in the 60s. So, but he, at the beginning of the movie, he kind of makes a comment, like, he comes, his wife uh, is, like, gives water to a couple of black guys that are like fixing something in his house and then he throws the cups away and he's like ah god damn it you know because they're black but then truly truly later on you find out in the movie he wasn't actually racist and i feel like a lot of my the friends that i grew up with that would say a racist comment from yeah. time to time they weren't true racist sure, like, sure, deep sure. down you know what i mean the, sure. the real true racist the uh-huh. only true racist i've ever met have been maybe like in middle america sure yeah yeah i remember with you yeah. and i um yeah. there was a really slow checkout girl at cvs the other week mm-hmm. and you called her an n-word bitch to her face <laughs> when you get to the front of the line but that doesn't mean that, that leo was true. racist you know yeah, yeah dude i just because i threw out an n-word <laughs> you know what i mean to a woman's face leo well, that was black. really out of character you for you are that was really out of asshole. character uh that didn't happen that did but not if happen. it did it wouldn't mean i was racist that's all i'm saying yeah that was it by your logic i like that yeah is that is that uh uh well i mean if vigo it's vigo morgan mortensen right yeah vigo mortensen yeah i'm reading the lord of the rings the two towers right now mm-hmm. uh, and uh yeah I'm at, I'm at the battle of helm's deep dude no oh, where man. the elves and the and the orcs all go ah, Oh, they really fight. they yeah. go into like really into detail about like the kills and stuff or is it more like how in detail is that scene? it's way less in detail than the movie really the movie whoever wrote that movie deserves an award and a tony soprano style shady blowjob mm. because they made that thing intense the book it's just a very it just glazes over everything it's like then the orcs approached the helms deep and the battle commenced ladders were thrown against the wall some time passed before the gate was breached and in came the wild men from dunland Hmm. like it's just like hey you guys what happened to the when the orcs are all out there lined up staring down the people on the wall austin what the fuck is wrong with you right now austin looks like he's gonna (laughs) shoot up a school you look like eric harris right before columbine dude he he took a giant hit of the old bong skis that's what it is they went out last night too they're all hung over i'm just I don't, I was just, in, I'm just enjoying the pod, man. You, yeah. I think it's a nice change of pace, not having a guest. And I feel like, you know, I shouldn't talk too much right now. I was just kind of listening. You know, Austin, he was, he was watching. It was like he was watching a movie right there. Yeah. Did he really looked like, remember God bless him. Cameraman Nate from back in the day. Yeah. Camera. We had a cameraman Nate too. A lot of the people who I'm almost certain that less than 1% of the podcast audience was watching the channel when cameraman Nate was around. Mm -hmm. He was a very, very talented cinematographer. Super talented. But I think he would admit this, that he had a lot of vices at that point in his life. Namely, staying late in all-night gambling dens, not sleeping a wink, and then coming to shoots. He also was dealing with substance abuse issues. So we would get him on shoots. And while we were driving to places like Santa Barbara or the Salton Sea, I'd look into the rearview mirror and the guy was nodding out in very much the same way Austin just was. <laughs> I, I mean, I did, I did hit the bowl like right before we started. And I bought some indoor for the first time in a while. So, Oh, shit. You bought indoor instead indoor. of the clippings you, you gather up at a, a certain residence mm-hmm. yeah, you usually you just pick it out of the ground right yeah when th- i'll be like whenever i'm able to do that yeah uh, quit acting like having a roof over the weed or not is making any difference no it, it dude i worked at a hydroponic shop it was my first official job and i can tell you that the indoor weed they it's like a scientist well a good grower indoor can really tinker with it and you add all these things to make the the buds gigantic and it's just chemicals into the uh into the roots I, and you can really make it stronger i refuse to believe that any weed has any effect on austin anymore oh that's true probably true yeah. it's like a yeah. truck driver being like well, i really got a head booze off these these marlboro reds i usually smoke virginia Sl-. Uh, if you've been smoking fucking the substance tobacco in the truck driver's case for 40 years they're not getting a nicotine rush you're not getting high because the weed is grown with a lamp in a closet at this point it's more of like a lifestyle choice you know that's good it's like i'm I'm part of a community (laughs) you know what i'm saying you're part of a lot of communities austin can you right now i want you to list 
the communities to which you belong, the roles you occupy. Well, okay, I like I'm in the RuneScape community. Yeah, you are. I'm in the uh, the Danny Mullen community. Yeah, yep. that's fair. I'm in the uh, One Piece like trading card community, mm -hmm. the Battle Spirits trading card, the LDS community, community Leon Danny Show, yeah. and Latter Day Saints. You're also a Mormon. That's right. The yeah, LGBTQ the, plus community <laughs> and the Christian community. Hell yeah! Are you in the Christian community? Uh, are yeah. you? Yeah, they're big I mean, time sinners, though. We, both we, you and Dino. Like on my live streams, we talk about the Bible and shit all the time. Well, a lot of people talk about the Bible who aren't Christians. I guess so. Yeah, it's one of the. It's the most important book. When's the last time you went to church? I agree with you, by the way. Lee. When's the last time you went to church? Probably just right before I moved into here. All right. I've still been going to con church like consistently, basically. Well, not that consistently. It's been a while. I mean, more than most people, like weekly. All, like what kind of church probably. would you go to? Uh, the one I was going to before was like non-denominational, but mm. I grew up like Baptist. I uh, what was Baptist like? Because because I went to Catholic church probably maybe thirty times in my life, you know, and uh, you know it was always just mm, Spiritus Santi. They would just hit those same notes. Oh. Yeah, and then like the uh, the Leah made this joke about like. Everybody in, in like all the like the, the stained glass like depictions of like Christ and everybody, everybody's kind of always looking down like and it's true. They're all like looking down at you in a very creepy way. Yeah, they're, See, they're my judgmental. church experience is the complete opposite. It's like you walk in and it's like, yo, bro, what's going on? Welcome to church. God fucking rules, dude. We're about to have a water balloon fight. Wow. Oh, that's that like, was Baptist church? That sounds yeah. insufferable. Like, I, call those guys, I, yeah. I call those guys sideway hat Christians. That's how dude. it was when I was a kid. <laughs> I think it's worse than a sideways hat Christian. Like, what's up, a, my man? What's your relationship with Jesus Christ, your Lord they would try and Savior? To make not that you have to have one. <laughs> We're not going to put that kind of pressure on you, dog. Yeah. We just skateboard, and yeah. we, we talk about rock and roll. Yeah. And then if you want to, we read the Bible afterwards, but no pressure, dog. Yeah. The kind of guy that will he'd pull over when he sees like a, a, a skirt fly up in the wind, and he sees like a thong, or he pulls over and jerks off. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> praise, wow, and yeah. praise. That sounds just like Austin or Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, I... I I think Leo would become a devout, devout Catholic if the Pope had his own show and in the show he cheated on his wife. Oh, <laughs> I know the Pope's not married, but the Pope is a, he's one of the only Popes that did have a formally had a girlfriend. He had a girlfriend before he was of the cloth. There we go. If he he's talked man, about man. how like if the Pope came up to the bishops, it was like, hey, uh, you've been getting pussy, Joey. Oh, oh, let me hook. Let me get you uh, as somebody. I was filming a video today in a, or excuse me. I was filming a video two days ago and a street hooker referred to a blowjob as gummy dummy. If the Pope was like, <laughs> hey, Hey, Bishop Charles, let me get you some gummy dummy on oh, yeah. the Pope. Huh? You would be on your knees repenting right now. I'm surprised that there is no kind of religious kind, like connection to getting a lot of pussy because it does help society. It, wait, it helps wait, wait, spread wait. your seed. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Hey, like, yeah. you know, like, well, like they should like in the Bible, it should say like get like, hey, yeah, learn to have a little game. Fucking go up to some chicks, get some pussy. It says live pro long and multiply, dude. It, there it is. Spread your seed, dude. Don't spill your seed. There it is. My When I dated the Orthodox Jewish girl, which, you know, of course, the, the Jewish religion is really interesting. It's even older than, you know, the, the Bible per se. But it, she told me that they believe that coming is the closest you get to God. And that it's that God is in the room with you when you're fucking. That sounds like some pagan horseshit, dude. And God, oh my God, God would be disgusted if he were in the room with you, Leandro, Why? while you were fucking. Well, because... Um, Why do you, I hate that I have told you because what I am Because vanity is a sin, Leo, and everything you do in the bedroom is the pinnacle of vanity. I like having a mirror so the girl can look at me with it while I'm doing doggy. Because otherwise, you know, she can only look at me if she's looking back at it. But she, with a mirror right there, she can just look at the mirror and see me just... Going to town. Going to town, huh? Is that what you call it? I don't go that hard. I, yeah. I, I, get, I get a nice rhythm going. The town, you know? I, I think, is like a, uh, a an old, decrepit steel town in Ohio. Oh, yeah. That's the only town you go to when you make love. Going to town. Yeah, you're not going to New York City or Chicago, my boy. New York's pretty, yeah, dude. I'd, I'd go to Pittsburgh, dude. I like Pittsburgh. I don't even think you go to Pittsburgh when you have sex with a girl, Leo. You think I'm going to fucking Louisville, Kentucky, dude? 
I think you might be going to Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Baco, dude. That's the town you're going to. In the to. summertime. What do you go to town? It's 110 summertime Baco, dude. I've been there before. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's when you're in the bedroom, it looks like it's 110 in Bakersfield <laughs> based on how much effort you're putting out. 110 in Bakersfield where you see the prostitutes on that on 18th Street. This is my impression of Leo because it, it's, it feels like it's 110 in the room because this is how he makes love. Oh. <sighs> That's how I get a blowjob, all right? That is not how I make love. Getting a blowjob is how you make love because that's all you do, you greasy No, when I hit it, when I do doggy, I feel like I can make girls come because I'm really good on the mic. You know what I mean? Like, I can talk them into getting, like, I'm really good at talking during sex. This is how Leo talks. Oh, here we go. This is how Leo talks when he's having sex. Can you can you call me daddy? That I don't no daddy? I don't I don't. Can you don't tell me how big my dick is? I don't ask. Can you questions. tell me how big my dick is? I don't ask it's questions. Big. Can you can you tell me how good my jawline looks? It looks good. And oh, I came. Never talk to me again. Kimmies. What time did your mom say you have to be home? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some girls live in, at their parents' house well into their twenties. Well into their 20s, some girls live at their parents' house. Most, In your case, most are well into their teens. I'm, dude, now that I'm 37, I don't uh, talk about the, uh, my age on this pod all the time because it's hilarious, but one day I'm going to just stop talking about my age, you uh, know? But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just going to, everybody's going to wonder how old I am. Make friends with somebody at wikipedia.org and get that page changed. Dude, Tony Soprano is like 46 in this show and he's banging like a 24-year-old, so... Mm. I, you know, t- mid 20s, they can go for any guy, you know, like Brad Pitt right now is probably banging like a mid 20s. But I think the 19 year olds, I yeah. think the teens are done for me, unfortunately. Yeah, teens are pretty. I mean, if, if 18 and 19, like, I don't think I don't think I can talk to those loopy fucking what, chicks anymore. Well, first of all, I agree that the idea of dating an 18 or 19 year old is out of the question. Yeah. But if one fell into your lap, <laughs> why Who am I to deny, you know, her a phenomenal romp in the sack? Yeah, I if I was if I had to try to find a wife right now or a serious girlfriend right now, Mm -hmm. she would probably have to be out of college Mm -hmm. for me in in terms of a serious relationship, because I feel like a chick Dino and Austin are really going to hate to hear this right now. But a chick who's 20 or 21, that chick's got a lot of fucking partying to go engage in yes. and get out of her system. I know you yeah. probably hate to hear that too, you pseudo Muslim jealous bastard. No, it sucks. But you you got to be Muslim sometimes with it though. But no, but you can, you know, what are you looking for in the next? You basically went through your first relationship like recently, right? I mean, this was your first long-term kind of thing ever, right? Define long-term. Well, you never had, did you have a girlfriend for more than a year ever before Mia? On and off. On and off for more than a year? Yeah, yeah. So this was your first like consecutive long-term kind of thing. Yeah, probably. So now looking back, like I've dated, I dated, uh, when I first dated a girl like long-term for the first time when I was like 21, it was like two years, uh, from from 19 to 21, I then kind of was like, all right, now I'm looking for this in the next relationship. And then after that one, then I was like, now I'm looking for this. Now I'm looking at this. So it kept going up and now I have an, an idea of what I want. And you know what it is, a girl with an extremely insane father that's kind of Middle Eastern that just doesn't let her go out much. Uh Uh-huh. And is and she's just kind of down to have like a crazy guy that controls right. her a little bit. So that was like the opposite of what I was getting at. I uh-huh. was saying I want a chick who's got all like the partying and like the hooking no, up. I know what you're saying. The opposite out of her system. Yeah. What I'm saying is that I know that's what I'm looking for. Cause, it, you know, Because I'm a Muslim. But sure, you, sure. on the other hand. So now what are you looking for in the next relationship? Uh, you well, think? First of all, I'm not looking for anything right now. No relationship. You're 33. What do you want to have, give your parents some grandkids or you don't care? Do you want to bring some kids into the world? Let's talk. I want to give your parents some grandkids. Kids by Why? fucking your sister. You sick <laughs> son of a bitch. Austin, I got him. Austin was I too stoned to even get him. Austin shit. was on the moon when I made that joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, we need we need the uh, fucking laugh track, Austin. No, what we need. No, no. Uh, Danny, fuck your there, sister. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. No, but for real, do you want to bring some kids into this world? Be honest. I so right now, no. And yeah. the thing is, it's hard for me to even tell you right now what I would be looking for in a future relationship because I do not want to rush into another relationship. Mm-hmm. Why? Because doing so would be selfish. My schedule is, I mean, it's its a busy schedule. We're on the road all the time. There's a lot of work to be done. And I wouldn't want to feel resentful because I had a girlfriend and I had date night on Thursday night 
And I had to do that instead of finishing an edit or going and doing stand up with you or something. Yeah. So it wouldn't be fair. And it wasn't fair to me in the last relationship. Mm-hmm. I was already like way too busy and neglectful. Yeah. So I'm not looking for a relationship now. I don't know how long that period is going to last. Mm-hmm. But it, and then when I do arrive at the place where I'm going to want a relationship, it's hard to know what I'll want then because things change all the time in life. Yeah. If I had to guess right now, it would probably be a girl who was a professional who had a job as a lawyer or something in finance who was really busy, too. Mm -hmm. So our really busy lifestyles were compatible with each other. We had each other, say, on Sunday and Saturday afternoons. I think that's I think that I think that most men that want a girl like that can want can even sacrifice some looks in that department. But you can find some hotties that have professional jobs. You know what I mean? Obviously, they're not going to be as hot as the girl that's tanning all day and works out three hours a day and to post some bikini pics on her mm-hmm. on her, on her her Instagram, mm-hmm. per se. But you will, you know, that's cool. I'm, I'm interested. But what about your parents? Do you ever think about them as they're aging? Because we, we both have aging parents. Uh-huh. And for, uh, you know, the truth is, I've been talking to all my friends, and it's basically like you change their fucking entire life when you have a, a, a child because then they have like a new happiness that they can, you know, they're they're not so bored any, anymore, and now they have this new thing to put their energy into. It's like your your child per yeah. se, and you know that's even though I look at the world and it looks like it's bleak, and you know I, I know we're in L.A., but even small towns seem a little fucked up to be honest. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to live in a small town to be mm-hmm. honest. I'd be well. Dead you take bored. girls to them all the time, so it's interesting that you <laughs> want to live in one. I, I get what you're saying though. Yeah. But, so I know you and I have talked about this. Leo sisters mm-hmm. are uh, they're fucking up we can say I'd that i'd say they're fucking up because they're not having children yet my sister had two grandchildren oh, actually so you're good so you have the pressure off now. my parents they already facetime with the babies all the time and they go out there and they visit the little tykes so uh, you know papa mullen can take his time man you're lucky bro. papa mullen can wear pink sunglasses with a flamingo on him these mm. have a flamingo on him right yeah uh, so. no. yeah the pelican or uh, that's a flamingo what am i saying yeah, I got flamingo glasses. I I don't feel that pressure. I feel mm-hmm. like because I don't have kids, I can just spend, and I don't have a wife or a girlfriend, I can just spend more time with my parents now. I see my parents and I talk to my parents all the time, which if that doesn't make them happy, they can suck on D's, to quote Saltine. <laughs> they can suck on D's. You're a good son. You go and you visit your parents plenty. And I guess I do have another 10 years before. I, I, if I have a baby at 45, 47, I should be all right, right? I, is he going to be autistic? You think, what are the chances my kid's autistic? It depends on what you're putting your penis in. It depends on what you're taking to town. Like. I, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter how old you are. Like, Dino's probably way more likely to have an autistic <laughs> kid than you. Uh-huh. And that's Dude. not because he smokes weed. That's just genetics. It's yeah. just it because he would just, he would feed it just trash. Oh, you know, my for God. For the first five years. Like, uh, I ran out of formula, so I put Takis in the blender. <laughs> And then, like, pour some Mountain Dew in there. It's oh. like, you can, can drink it in the bottle. Ugh. Dino, if your baby, like, if it, like, played with any toy that was pink, he would just, like, write the baby off as gay and disown <laughs> it. Like, uh, gay. <laughs> he would also never, if the poor baby was gay, and I do believe people can be born gay. Dino doesn't Well, well even, progressively. Yeah. I know, right? Dino can, does not believe that people are born gay, dude. You don't, Dino? No. See? He doesn't believe people are born gay. That is a problem. Yeah. Uh, what so what'd you say, Dino? humans turn him gay, dude. He'd, he'd blame you. He would, he would leave the baby with you for 30 minutes one time, and, and it would then turn out to be gay and be like, the one time I left it with Danny Mullen. He would tell his whole family that, too. <laughs> I left it with Danny for 30 minutes, and he's gay now. I don't know. Well, in that case, he'd be right, because I would molest the baby. <laughs> and that would fuck with his head and probably make it inclined to do gay stuff. Oh, Dino, I, yeah, people are... People are born gay for sure. And I say that knowing guys who are gay as shit super early in life. Kindergarten, bro. Yeah, like, dude, I knew guys that were fucking gay way before there was any incentive to be gay. Like, you got a job more easily Mm -hmm. or you could be on the Hollywood red carpet. I knew fucking dudes born into working class Orangevale families who in fifth grade were flamers, dude. Yep. And then they came out later on. Like, why would they, how would they know to do that? Dude, Colton. Dino is saying they can still, I'm I repeating, just, I'm repeating what Dino says because he's unmiked and it's making me stupider to repeat it. <laughs> what was so that dumb. point about how gay guys can still get pussy, Dino? They can just get pussy. 
that it would be it. like you trying to fuck a dude, Dino. Your dick wouldn't get hard. That's true. what would happen. Yes, it is true. I know because I spoke to Colton about it. When he was on The Batch, dude, he would like... Colton, the famous bachelorette yeah, that contestant who came out as gay later on. Came out as gay. Like, he was totally into me, so he would kind of share all his little secrets, right? And he would like be like... Yeah, man, just fucking, yeah, you know, I was like, you ever try to have sex and shit? Like, late night talks, you know, with the boys? You asked him that? Oh, yeah, and he would, and he'd be like. <laughs> what a ridiculously yeah, general Yeah, because he question. was a, a virgin, dude. He was a virgin. <laughs> a what? Yes, bro. Wow. He was a virgin at 26. That was his thing. Oh, wow. So he told everybody, like, within the first day that he was a virgin, and then he was waiting for marriage because he's religious. And okay. I was like. I thought he was just a regular guy. I was just imagining you going up to no. a dude in the bar, like, hey, dude, you ever try to have sex and shit? <laughs> dude, Fez definitely, dude, we went deep dove. He definitely never put his penis into a vagina. Oh, 100%. 100%. Percent. He's never inserted. Anyway, I so didn't mean Colton, to interrupt you. No, no, yeah. So yeah. Colton, so we, you know, I was just talking with the boys and we'd be like, yeah, man, fucking, you ever try to have sex? You know, I was like, you ever just get in there and lick some pussy? And he's like, ah, fuck, it gets, they get so wet. And I was like, they get wet in your, and, uh, and he said it in a way where it was like, this guy's his dick was not going to get hard with a vagina. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it was just not. They get so wet. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Your penis in there feels pretty good. <laughs> but uh, uh, but like, yeah. So it was like he would for sure. I know. For, like he just couldn't get hard. He probably tried uh -huh. a bunch of times and just was not able to get hard because he was the heartthrob of the show. He was a very handsome guy. He's like six four, ripped. Let's fucking, pull up Colton from The Bachelorette. Yeah, Colton Underwood. Dude, every chick was like, dude. All about him. Yeah. Gay guys were already all about him, too. I remember oh, one yeah. of my gay buddies from back in the day hit me up because he knew that I knew you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's up with Colton? So the gay guy, gay. the gaydar was. So I told, I remember, dude, yeah, like, yeah, bring up. Yeah, bring up. Like, I knew. He's just, he looks like kind of like a buff Ken doll. He was bigger than, dude, he's bigger than me. And he's a freak athlete, which was kind of shocking. Like he could, he could like windmill dunk, dude. And he was in the NFL, dude. He was on the, he was two years practice squad for the Raiders. But uh, the thing about Colton was though that he was so obviously gay, and you could tell it was just the guy, a guy that would just not be able to get hard around a chick. So then it would cause like issues in all his relationships. No, he was born. Dino he was, was saying he was he, molested. His dad was like this. I met his dad, and his dad was like. <laughs> What's up, guys? Fucking Donald Trump. Fucking oh, 2024. Really? He was like damn. the most down and like a stud too. Like bitches loved his dad, dude. He was like six five and like a, a, like a rancher, and he was just like the the man, dude. But so anyway, he had a real alpha dad that was probably like, "Gotta go out there and fuck bitches, son." And he was just like, "Ah, damn." Man. So then he like put it all into like athletics, and then like uh -huh. you know, and then one day. Is it possible? Because your dad's very similar. Your dad's mm -hmm. very like. I mean, he did it with a little bit more uh, suave than it sounds like Colton's dad did. But is there instead of playing football or like being a real? Is there any chance that like you're putting all your secret gay energy paradoxically <laughs> into getting pussy? Into get <laughs> <laughs> you know what, dude? I mean, I love doggy style. Yeah, like, dude, they did. They have a they had a scene in uh, which you should see. I know you haven't seen it yet, but. Uh, uh, fucking Brokeback Mountain is a really good movie. I know that it's about a gay Yay. guys. I know that it's about the gay guy. There's one gay scene in it, and that's it. The Just rest look, of it. It's a whole the whole movie. It's gay. not the whole movie's not gay. It's, well, it's, it's two called guys. Brokeback Mountain. I, I don't know why that's, they named it. To this day, I don't know why they didn't. They I know they snickered when they named it. Oh that, yeah, hundred percent. But it's. They would like they were like fighting, but yeah, they have one scene where he like turns the chick over, and it's like, come on, that's not gay, dude. Just because he likes a nice ass, he turns like, a stop. chick over. Yeah, he's oh, like wait. they're having sex missionary, and he's just like they show him like after like after the fact, after they show him, you know, they clearly show like Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal Hall that were into each other and shit, and then like there's a scene, then like they like, fast forward, and then he's fucking his wife and the missionary, and he like turns her over, you know what I mean? And like mm -hmm. I was like, what are they suggesting? Mm -hmm. Doggy style's gay because it's not. What do you think, Dino? All right, Dino. Dino's into I'm anal, really surprised, bro. Dude. Dino had anal sex way too early. I think that's what fucked him up. Well, let's talk about this, because I got to take a wee-wee, but these two guys said they went out last night, or Austin went out last night, and I want to hear about it. It Me sounds too. like the most depressing night of all time. Yeah. So let's get into it after I take a tinkle. Sounds good. So, Austin, so you had We're back. A, We're, back. We're good? Yep. Right. So, so you had yourself a night last night. Sunday night, by the way, Mr. Christianity. What'd you, you do on do. the Sabbath? Well, there was this like fake hurricane, so it was kind of raining. We wanted God, to go what a fishing. Pussy that was that the was. plan. We were gonna Ooh. go film ourselves fishing at the lake. Smart. But then we ended up just 
filming like a stupid beer pong tournament in the living room, and well, then we went to this rave, and there was well, about fifteen well, people. We there. should back up on this a little bit because you did. You brought up a good point, though, Austin. We're going to get to the fifteen person rave in a second. Yeah, but uh, I had so many people from so many places texting me about how gnarly this supposed hurricane was, how I needed to stock up on dry goods, have a generator. Like my mom was basically speaking about me losing power as if it were a certainty. And then there's a weather service emergency for an earthquake yeah. that kicks in midday, too. So you would think that mm -hmm. we were in the eye of Hurricane Katrina on the most southern dock in New Orleans. Yeah. Like, that's how people were acting they in were, L.A. Dude, the, Twitter was, like, trying to, like, make L.A. seem like, like anything was going on. There was a picture of, like, Dodger Stadium being, like, like uh, like like what is it? Un inundated with water, and then if you look closely, it was just the parking lot with like a glisten on it. It was un they they're just like straight lying, dude. I was like, that it's fine. There's no water there. Hey, like I don't. Like, yeah, you wanted to go to the Doyers game Doyer next game. Thursday, but like if the parking lot is a little damp, dude. Pendejo, I don't think I can go. Fuck, dude, we were gonna stomp out that fucking giant fan, dog. Fuck, ah, it's I on the anniversary of the time the guy almost got killed, dog. We were supposed to go there and stomp another one out. Dog. We won't be able to get our footing in the <laughs> fight if the parking lot is wet, Holmes. Dog, we're going to have to wear our fucking non-slip shoes, the same ones that we wear in the kitchens, bro. Fuck. It'll be easy because I'm getting off work at Olive Garden hey, perfect, just before dog. the game, and I'll take off my apron and, and then my, just keep the shoes on, and dog. my dishwashing gloves. Perfect. And you have the non-sleeps, dog. The Me non too, dog. The non-sleeps. You know, I got the non-sleeps from working at the taco stand. I work at the Leo's taco truck, dog. Oh, that, the, your, those, the carne asada it's is so good. good there, dog. Dog. Oh, yeah, dog. Where's Saltine? Is he here? He's downstairs, yeah. Saltine, get up here. So, Austin. Yeah, well, there was a pussy hurricane. Mm -hmm. I actually did go driving in the middle of the hurricane. Why? Well, you know, hey, I might have... Uh, you have a death wish, don't you? Well, it wasn't even a hurricane. Yeah, it's the, literally impossible. I was, like, telling people this. I was like, the it mountains, is impossible right? to have a hurricane in L.A. The water's too cold. It would just, oh. like, hit the cold water and then turn into a normal rainstorm. That's and what happened. I was, like, looking at the news on YouTube, and it said... Uh, it has been downgraded to a tropical storm. Like, by the time it got to us, it was not even a hurricane. Anymore. Yeah, no, I, I misspoke. The hurricane's aftermath or the fucking residual or fringe effects of the hurricane that was a tropical storm. I went driving in them and I did try to merge and I hit a puddle and I almost swerved into a truck next to me. Really? So for me, it was dangerous. But for Austin, so you guys filmed the beer pong tournament. Yeah. Who won? Swoby. Okay, that makes sense. It's kind of cheating because he's so low to the rim of the cups. <laughs> and I kind of spoiled it now, so. Ah, uh, well, it's okay. I mean, people, I mean, you know, people are really going to, well, they're going to, you've been getting some views, dude. I like you. The videos are good, dude. You know, I'll keep going. I mean, you had Thanks, like man. the gnarly fight. You had to take that down, of course. But Did you yeah. take that down? Yeah, I just put it up for like a, a day Cred. so that people could, you know, the real ones could watch it and laugh. Well, and it's all over YouTube the internet now, by the way. I have me. at least, let me see, like uh, five fans have sent me the fights from different things. Reddit, Twitter, uh, somewhere else. Like there's another it was real uploaded on YouTube uh, and then an Instagram story. So people, so many people have seen this, this fight. It's all over the Internet. Yes, yeah, Swoby, Swoby is a machine. Swoby man. did absolutely knock the dog shit out of a Korean guy. Oh, man, did he? In what a, a nice right bar. hand, a nice overhand right, dude. The guy Swoby did what a lot of people wish Leo and I would do in videos. Mm. But we can't because, well, well, we couldn't put it up then, right? No, of course. It's, it's you not. Can't, you can't just put a full fight on YouTube. You, I mean, you can. And it, uh, it looked like that guy was harassing you guys and Swolby. Well, he but, just attacked Swolby. Mm. And then he swung a cheap shot on me for no mm -hmm. reason. Did he swing at Swolby first? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's probably completely justified. But just for me, I, I have an anxious, overactive mind sometimes that it wouldn't be worth the headache. Clearly, it wasn't worth the headache to you either because you didn't want it up long term. But no. Swolby, beautiful right hand. Really good right hand. Overhand right. Nice shot. Um, it's good to defend yourself, you know, when you need to. I've never really needed to, to be honest. I mean, we were think me and Danny were thinking about just... <laughs> 
we were gonna go i was gonna go one-on-one with the fucking uh just to have like a fight under my belt you know what i mean with the kid with the kid with the tank top in the video danny was like should we go with the back? kid in the new orangeville video to, uh, that, channel video he deserved to get it how many i bet that kid's been killed so many times in street fights dude he's one of, like he just forgets you probably got knocked out like three times before that taco bell incident that that week you know what i mean like mm-hmm. that guy was just like Asking for it. He dude. looked like an extra in a movie. Like y'all hired him to wear a wife yeah. beater, a dirty be wife Bell. beater, and he had like dirt on his face. Yeah, he went out for the Jesse Pinkman role in Breaking Bad, but was rejected. <laughs> exactly. He's on a short list, though. Exactly. That guy. What I rewatching that clip. One thing that's interesting is when he's coming at us, and I mentioned the other guy mm-hmm. who's just a dude who hangs out with tweakers. At a Taco Bell. The only distinction is that guy somehow still had a truck. Yeah. When I mentioned the other guy, the original tweaker, Tank Top Kid, was like, do you even know who that is, dog? <laughs> oh, your fucking local fentanyl dealer? Yeah, what it's the like, fuck? It's the fentanyl dealer for this Taco Bell? Is that, it? In, that in this kid's mind, that's El Chapo. Dude. What a, I can't believe Orangevale is... It's gotten way worse every year that we go. It gets worse, dude. Way worse. Yeah, we, way worse. Yeah. When we first went and screwed with Taco Bell in 2019, we didn't even find any tweakers. We were just effing with the staff of the Taco yeah. Bell. Yeah. Then we then we found, of course, that bum that showed us his penis by the Elder Bertos. Yeah, that was nice. That was yeah. a nice bum. That was a great bum. But he, nice he's clearly penis, out of his mind. You know, I mean, he's like from the low, like he grew up right next to you and that guy, and then he just didn't go very far, dude. Then he just went right to the streets by the Elder Bertos. Not very far at all, man. No, man. Orangevale is, it's on the map, dude. People are going to start talking about Orangevale like it is one of those towns, dude. It's one of those rough places. I think it's, I think it should be mentioned in the same breath as Compton. I, <laughs> oh, really? Well, you know what? Fuck it. Orangevale is should go down as a place where you want to run your your drug trade. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know the cops ain't going around there. Yeah. They're gonna turn the other cheek. Yeah. If they're going by Orangevale. They don't wanna they don't wanna wrap themselves up in that gang nope. warfare. It actually doesn't have a police department, Leo. Look at that. It borrows a couple of cruisers from the Folsom PD when Folsom can spare them, which is rare. Mm. Which is rare because a lot of rich white women want the police to investigate black kids in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And therefore, those resources can't be diverted to our Orangeville Taco Bell. We should start a hip-hop crew. Because, like, NWA, I feel like, put Compton on the map, if I know what I'm talking about with regards they to did. hip-hop. We should, like, uh, you know, like, crackers with big dicks, dude. What's the acronym <laughs> for that? Crackers with big dicks. CWBD. <laughs> Yo. CWBD. Here, I'm going to throw it down. Hanging on the podcast with my boy, Lee O. We get lots of pussy. We get them hoes, and we turn those sluts out in the Taco Bell, and then we go shoot up a jail taco because those motherfuckers are ours fucking with our turf. Austin fucks girls till it fucking hurts because he's a big dick cracker with attitude. And if you fuck with him, you're screwed. Hit it, Austin. Dude, wait. I have a request for Austin. Austin's got to hit this. It. No, he's gonna hit it. But I want the English. I want English rapper. Austin. Wait, no, he's a fucking from Orangevale. Ah, uh, well, it's so he did it. He killed it so much on the uh, on on LD on uh, Leo and Friends. By the way, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, Austin did, dude. He uh, dude. He dude. He not only does he get the reps being a regular rapper, but he can do like an English rapper like to the T, dude. He sounds like any one of the big English rappers out like there. Like UK drill rap. Oh, well, yeah, you're from bro. Orangevale. Dude. All right, go. Rap you're from, from Orangevale. Orangevale. <laughs> I got you. Hey. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm feeling blessed while I'm doing mess. And I'm trying my best. I'm on welfare. I got the food stamps. And I got homeless tramps. Yeah, I just did some fentanyl. I'm probably gonna OD. Mm. But I got that motherfucking Narcan on me. Yeah, and I keep it real P. Orangeville down South California, motherfucker. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. See, there we go, dude. A couple more of those freestyles hit the internet, dude. Maybe a TikTok gets picked up by the algorithm. We're putting OV on the map. What if you had to make it as a rapper from Orangeville? <laughs> In the next ten years, or you, or you, or someone would execute you. What would you? Do you think you could do it? 
Define a rapper. I mean, there are so you'd many rappers. To, dude, like, you'd have to like sign to like a major labor, label and, and collab with one of the big dogs, like either Drake, Snoop Dogg, fucking Dr. That's Dre. That's a different you know? thing. I was going to say that there are so many rappers that I'm just not even sure they're fucking rappers. Like yeah. forever, I thought the Island Boys were rappers. <laughs> Turns out they're just like gay TikTok gigs. Like, yeah. li- like, did that little Xan <laughs> guy even have any songs or was he just a guy that I took he, Xanax? He, he was he just did. a guy that like hung around with a few different rappers that like Adam 22 knew and he like made beats I think and then one day they were just in the studio and they were like yo you should rap kid and then like he rapped and then he made like one song and it just like blew up was he was like never really trying to be a rapper I I don't I haven't heard anything by Lil Xan what's up Saltine but this is what I imagine his music sounded like yeah, 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 bitches on my dick. Yeah, bitches on my dick. I don't give a shit because I'm on the Zan, bitch. Oh. It's kind of like that. Close, it's actually, actually yeah. pretty mm-hmm. close to what it is. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I guess having a hit song, you'd probably be able to do it if you did. If you just like drop fucking songs. You on just the need daily. a good enough producer. You I can just, find somebody. I think you could network. I think you could network your way to the top and be a rapper if you needed to from Orangevale and put them on the map. I'd become a manager at Dairy Queen. Yeah. I'd live at my parents' house. You'd have to. I'd spend all of my paycheck money on producers. Yeah. And then I would just be like, yeah, OV, Taco Bell, we run shit, come through the drive through and you'll get hit. Yeah. And then like, I'd, and then I would just like maybe. I would put out Twitter videos, excuse me, X videos mm-hmm. of me just fighting people in the parking lot. I love it, dude. That re- that, dude, that would really, dude, that's the best fucking plan I've ever heard to be a rapper in the world. I just, I run, like my turf is the real estate on which the Taco Bell sits. And I just <laughs> fight anybody I don't recognize who walks into Taco Bell. <laughs> And then, dude, and then, uh, dude, not only would you get on the, you'd be like Kimbo Slice viral with the fighting. And oh, then, yeah. like, obviously, when you'd gain this mass following, at some point, you'd get, you'd, you'd pop out a hit yeah. with one of your songs. Oh, I'd just be like, fucking, yeah, Orangevale, here we are, repping for OV, OV, OV. And that'd be the song, dude. Hell yeah. Nothing came to me, but it wouldn't matter because I'm the fighter guy. Saltine, we're going to come back to you. You yeah, do look very different, now. by the way. You look yeah. like, uh, I think, well, you lost your glasses. Um, no, I don't wear I, Sometimes I don't wear them. You know? You've only, seen me without them. Like you can't see ever. shit without them, dog. You, yeah, you don't you not. drive, though. It's just, I can drive without them. It's just like fine print words I can't see. Yeah, well, you don't yeah. read much anyway. Austin? Yeah. Uh, how was that 15 person rave? Dude, it was actually, like, pretty fun because I didn't realize how much Saltine could get down, bro. He oh, you was were the there? life of the party. Hell yeah, yeah, he brought dude. Saltine. Yeah. He had this big trench coat mm-hmm. on, and me, him, and Swoby were just, like, drinking seltzers and dancing around, dude. I was Techno lit, music. Man. How did that the girl was look? Oh, she, she was fine. She was, the, the one girl was fine? How many girls yeah. were at this rave? Was it like 15 Juice people, sex. 12 chicks? I mean, usually raves are heavy on the chicks, right? Well, yeah, because it's a chick yeah, yeah. that hosts. Leo, yeah. the joke I made was mm-hmm. that there was one, and mm-hmm. I'm quite sure that was the case, right? No, no, no. I thought you were talking about the one that got scooped from there. You know, oh, Salty well, brought well, a chick me. back. You got uh, laid, That's why you wanted to come on the pod. You just showed no, up. We no, uninvited to the pod I, to talk about this. I was, just, I was just hanging with her, and I came back to get my shit, um, my laptop and stuff. Saltine, when did they teach you a lesson in modesty? You really came all the way over here yeah. from your house downtown to, laptop, to tell bro. us that you scooped a chick. Congratulations, I didn't, nah, dude! I didn't dude. want to come on. This is supposed to be a solo pod. I Did should you, leave soon. Man. So you this, had this sex. Solo pod. You had sex. Yeah. With this chick. Quit acting like it's not a big deal. <laughs> I do not like how he started to. I know. I, this is bullshit, dude. <laughs> hey, no, you know it was what, amazing dude? sex, dude. Uh, here she we told go. me today. Did you? She was like, uh oh. I was like, did you really come twice? Because she came twice. She told me before I came. And I'm like, are you serious? And she was like, I think it might have been more. She was like, I honestly thought it was a so dream. Saltine, everyone like, wow. is, they, people like you, but people don't like that you think you are fucking Leo DiCaprio out uh, there, dude. I'm pretty fucking Leo. good You with should it. be you know, praying she says to she, God, thanking the Lord every time your penis gets wet, dude. Every time your penis gets wet. Even in the shower. Even in the shower, dude. You should be like, thank God that I have a shower to, 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 to wash my nah, balls. man. It, an asshole. I think uh, maybe you guys haven't seen it, but uh, I, I can raise a chick, bro. It's Salty. pretty easy it's when I want to. You know, there's a chi- there's a viral clip of a guy. Yeah. On, she got on double online. D's, bro. Salty. And we all got to see it the entire house. You here. drove all the way. You drove 
40 minutes with traffic right. drive. from downtown he to Ubered, here Danny. to tell us that you, <laughs> that you, did, that you yeah. scooped, that you gave the girl you scooped two orgasms, yep. possibly more, yeah. and that she had double Ds. You drove all the way here to <laughs> nah. tell us all of that yeah, information. Not not really. Danny, it's worse because he you didn't drive. You guys wanted me on here, dude. He didn't, didn't drive, Danny. What he did was Uber, and it, this half his paycheck went to the Uber to oh, Uber yeah. here during fucking rush hour, bro. During rush hour. I took a bus, hour. bro, for free. Oh, I, Dude, you're like... It took 30 minutes. Dude, you're not even paying for what's, the bus? What's yeah. the, the legend of marathon where the guy fucking like ran whatever, however yeah. long a marathon is to yeah. tell the fucking people that there was yeah. a, a battle? That, like, you just ran all the way from downtown. Like, my nah. liege, I saltine the second Esquire. Hey, I wasn't going to bring this up. scoop at the party last night. I think I gave her two <laughs> orgasms. It was and nice. her breastuses were deep hey. to the second power. <laughs> <laughs> you told me not to downplay, so then I told you that it was great, and that's why. You Brady bunch looking motherfucker, dude. Where? Why Ish. did you? Where did you get off getting these bangs, dude? Who huh? decided that was a oh, good well, look like, for you? Uh, nah, I got like I'm trying different things. Like uh, I'm trying the bangs right now, but I could also do. Austin says it looks better if I like swoop it up. Which I think you saw me. Gay, yeah, yeah. You, you saw me the other night. Yeah, I thought I thought it looked up. better backward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I just. I, I have it like this right now. Right just, now, you look goes. like a guy that was that would like get killed in Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, you know, you look like the guy that fell off the bridge in Saturday Night Fever, dude. The uh, the seventies disco movie. movie. I need uh, two things right now. I need Austin. Can you give me a confirmation that this girl is hot? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna plead the fifth. All right. <laughs> um, so she had big tits. She was just, fat. That's something. It, she was fat. That's. I mean, it's very easy to achieve double D's. Dude, I don't want to stomach shit. as a she fucking keg. Fine. I don't want like, to talk shit, dude. I'm glad you had sex. She wasn't that bad, no. Could you show no, us I a was, picture of her? Uh, my phone's fucking dead. I did just follow her on Instagram, but okay. Fuck. Let me see. On well, fuck salt in? Uh, no. no okay. I'm, well, I'm, uh, give what? Uh, get, I, come over here. She doesn't look anything like her Instagram. Looks way different in person. Uh huh. I bet. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I bet. bet. That's convenient. That's always it's like salty. what you want She to looks say. like, uh, I mean, She's like she, in person, she looks like a Victoria's Secret model, but she looks like a waitress at a Cracker Barrel on her Instagram. Like, I can't explain it's the all divide. Good, I don't get it, dude. <laughs> Like I like I don't know why she's like she's like uh, she, looks she like looks like a like like posh spice in the nineties in person, but she looks like she sells oranges on the side of the road on Instagram. Like, I don't get it. Dude. No, you said I mean, oranges she on the looks side worse of the road. on Instagram. I know that's opinion. the point. I'm, uh, that's that's worse because anybody can say they fucked a chick who was like a ten in person, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but is a three on Instagram. Yeah. Let me see. You looking at her, Leo? Man. I mean. I, I think she was really cute. She looks like she could have been in the movie Apocalypto. Shit, she likes dick, though. Oh, God. Why would she, you just say that? She says she's down to film some OnlyFans content. She By the way, did you use a condom with that girl? Nah. She's pregnant. No, because 100%. she can't conceive. She can't conceive whatsoever. She had an accident she when lied she was seven. You. Nah, bro. You think she had, she had an accident when she was seven? Yeah, she was serious as fuck when she said it, too. Like, she was going to cry. Like, you know. What do you think? Um, I think we're going to... We're gonna um, send her a message right now <laughs> from what? my f from my Instagram. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, wait, wait! I got you. Wait, she knows. Her, she don't care. Yeah, let's she call knows. her. Let's call her. Oh no, answer. Call again. Nah, I, I doubt she has. Do you have her phone number? Huh? Dial up her phone number. No, I don't dude. have the chick's phone number. What do you mean you don't have her phone number? D Bro, DM her. I'll get her Instagram. Night, I'll get her phone number. Right I'm gonna. Now. I'm gonna. Uh, Leo, do you know how to send a voice message? Can I send her a voice message? Yeah, yeah. Make I'll, it a record and then give me the phone. Yeah, do whatever you want, bro. <laughs> you, you think I care? Why are you so confident right now? Bro? Uh, damn, no, I, she I'm has like the new thing where she said you have to send an invite, dude. Uh, it doesn't, you can't even mess but with I her anymore. But I don't give a fuck because I'm not dating the bitch. All right, Saltine. Yeah. Well, I mean, all right, mister. Yeah. So, oh, well, whatever, whenever you slept with her, hair, her first but... story, is it says, I don't want to love you. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, what she said it. then. She wants to film some OnlyFans content too, bro. Right. Like, so, oh, uh, she'll give me... 30, 40%, she says. So. When she presses charges, have you thought about who your public defender is going to be? <laughs> nah, because she was... Nah, I can't say that. Well, we didn't say her name. She she was beat, she told us, like, by her boyfriend. And, you know, uh, like, she didn't press charges on him, so... Yeah, you know. you're... Like, I mean, might as well yeah. just haul off and the fucking yeah, hit her in the face next time you see her. Yeah. Just fucking, that's great, dude. That's so, like a girl yeah. who has no gag reflex. Yeah, <laughs> facts.
correct. Love those. <laughs> That's a pretty good stand-up joke. S- saltine. Um, <laughs> that'd go for great. Hey, you know those girls whose ex-boyfriends beat their shit out of them? They didn't do anything? <laughs> saltine. Uh, it's like they got no gag reflex. That's a keeper. Put a <laughs> ring on it. <laughs> Our fans, woo, like love it, dude. But yeah. like most of the time, it's kind of... The officiator said, uh, you may now windmill punch the bride. Ah, <laughs> I can knock her out on the, on the pews. Hey, uh, Saltine, thank you for coming to our show on Monday, by the way. That was, I appreciate Saltine. You're a good kid. For all the shit we give Saltine, show. he's the man. Hell yeah. Thanks, brother. Show. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was a little... Um, met some cool people there. I met the... Um, oh, what's his name? I feel bad. I forgot his name. He has like the stutter, that guy. Oh, he's dope. Uh, yeah, he's Guerrero, cool. dude. Guerrero. He's really cool. Yeah. Guerrero's dude. I, sweetheart, man. Yeah. Sweetheart. Love that kid. Those kids drive out from like an hour and a half yeah. away to, to come to all our Great. shows, he's bro. A, Do you, these guys got yeah. some cool Guerrero. Season. And he's a legend. And he's in a great video, too, for life. So, you know. Guerrero slash easier. Do you feel like Saltine that because he stutters and it takes him so long to say stuff, your brain has a chance to catch up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, salty. Um, you, know, you know what's fu- you know what's great though is a lot of the com- why don't we read why don't we go to the my me and Danny's Instagram and read some of the comments on the viral clip of salty because they're unbelievable, dude. <laughs> Have you seen? Right. Because no. we have, they've been Danny. They are unbelievable. Right. They're not fans of ours, bro, anymore because this clip like has got randoms. like 400. Yeah, it's randoms. And these comments are unbelievable. I saw, like, no, no, it's, it's on the it's just my Karen. or Danny's Instagram. I saw a Karen chick. Just go to Leo F. Dot. So some Karen write a paragraph on it. Oh, yeah, of course. Because, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, check out. She yeah. was like, are these guys really encouraging him to do this? this is not the way to go. Oh, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, go to there. We go. Yeah. So 237 got 29 point. 29,000 likes, dude. 328,000. So go go to that one. Click it. Yeah, yeah. You know what? We're not to watch the clip. Just let's read some of the comments. Well, the, John Winter says Danny's uh, oh, these are F-A. That's a... Uh, man's... That's, a, home, that's the first thing I'm... Where's dude, the, where's the man's top Man's got comments? hit with the... Riz, yeah, where, why are the top comments You have to be not? on your phone. You just read it off. Oh, yeah. I could read it off the phone, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Some of these comments are great, dude. Yeah. Saltine looks both homeless and wealthy at the same time. Oh, I love him. That guy's that, dope, dude. He went to our New York show. Dude. Yeah, he's me. So Saltine, you're you're vaping. You know how bad that is. Those are manufactured in the heart of mainland China in factories. Yeah, so is smoking anything. So it's like. So why don't you stop smoking anything? Uh, I don't know because I want to. I'd rather smoke than like drink all the time or do other things that most so people guy, are doing right like molly you sound coke. like justin tampas right so now. A guy it's my that, only vice it's my only vice <laughs> dude yeah you you were uh you were definitely uh providing china with what they want which is they oh yeah to, you yeah. know they they have like the chinese people hit it with their mouth too before you get it yeah. they do yeah but they don't yeah. give a fuck about those yeah, the, the people you know, working in the factories it, there you know? she blocked you because she just want to see you in person Fourteen thousand <laughs> likes <laughs> 1400 likes she blocked you and another guy wrote, Bad actually, advice. it's called a Riz training order. <laughs> you Riz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. A, I don't uh, even like that shitty word, but that's another funny. guy. Another guy wrote, just ask Leo what happened in the Universal parking lot if you want to talk about restraining orders, <laughs> asshole. Let's see. Another guy wrote, girls say that all the time, bro. They just trying to test how you into them. <laughs> uh, <dude. laughs> and then there, here's a girl that took it seriously. <laughs> They must be joking. Playing hard to get is a girl being busy on her first few invites to meet up. Any female who gets to this point, she absolutely is pished. You give her the ick. She is more than likely, dude, she went on forever. I'm not even going to read it all. No, but that but actually got a lot of likes. What she dude. said about you guys. I remember that one. She uh, was like pissed at she, she, Yeah, she's still going 73 replies to her thing. Dude. She's uh, still I going. I bet those replies are positive. Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh God. Bet, should we like, read some? Yes, we should no. read some of the replies to all the right, feminists. I got, so a guy, oh, God, so... <laughs> Here's here. If you can't tell it's a joke, that's your own fault, and you need better comprehension skills, or just don't listen to comedy at all if you can't handle that's it. That's actually a pretty level headed yeah. response. And then so she wrote, I grew up watching Eddie Murphy's stand up comedy. <laughs> His show, Delirious, got banned for years before he did Raw. His mentor was Richard Pryor, who was notoriously known for bad relationships with women. <laughs> People grew up watching his films. I follow lots of comedians and follow Joe Rogan. Love his humor. It's not the format, it is possible. People outside of America look at this and go, man, I hope this is a joke because it didn't rise a laugh, laugh out of them. It, can, it continues. I, if, if she loves Eddie Murphy so much, we should have just, just said a hard This F woman is a, a bunch keyboard more times. warrior, dude. She, she yeah. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that bad. I, it's, I, it's just it's amazing to me that she doesn't understand we're being very... <laughs> 
very sarcastic when we tell you that this was normal. Salty, maybe, you know that because of my reaction was serious in it. Another guy wrote, not, another guy wrote, uh, they're setting this up, this this poor man up for jail. <laughs> <laughs> 330 likes. Saltine, you haven't been back up to Santa Barbara since that restraining order, have you? I don't got a restraining order, but uh, I can also go up there anytime I want. I got homies up there, bro. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, what is the latest with this chick? Have you, she, have she contacted you or you contacted we her? We got into like a heated text argument. and okay. um, How? Wow. She was just, uh, she was like gas, just gaslighting me like crazy. <laughs> she claimed that I was gaslighting her, but you know, she... When I've known her, or the, during the time I knew her, she didn't remember things very well and was surprised at the fact that I remember things very well. So, you know, she was just saying that I was gaslighting her and stuff. And she was like, if you keep, if you contact me again, I'm going to... Same thing she said, I'm going to go to the police on Monday. I, I told you over the she phone. Reiterated she reiterated that? Shit. You're fine, yeah. dude. You're I'm, fine. Just don't, I'm chilling. Don't I'm not, contact her I'm again. I'm not saying shit to dude, her. Dude, I'm imagining, like, uh, when he says that they, like, the two of them remember things completely differently, I'm imagining, like, Jim Carrey's flashback in Dumb and Dumber, or flash forward where he, like, fights the chef and then takes his heart out. <laughs> like, Saltine's, like, just, yeah. so, like, her, like, Saltine's memory of the last time they hung out was at a candlelight <laughs> dinner at the finest restaurant in Santa Barbara overlooking the ocean. Yeah. Her memory of the last time they hung out, Saltine was wearing a ski mask yeah. and slithering through the bathroom. Yeah, All right, right. I, you, you're going to be... Uh, you're gonna hard be, to finish sentences around you're, here. You're going to be... I know, this fucking... Saltine, don't interrupt. You're going to be Saltine on the stand, and then, or do you want to be the girl on the stand after... Or, or And I'll be the... Uh, I guess I'll be the lawyer, but I want you to be Saltine on the stand re- recounting the last time... Fuck recounting that. the last time you hung out with her, and then I'll be the girl on the stand. Or you could be the girl. All right, I'll be, I'll be the Saltine. Uh, so... Uh, Please, uh, Mr. Saltine, uh, will you uh, let us know how it went with Angela the last time you guys hung out in Santa Barbara? So I got out of my limousine and we I had like already a very fine Persian rug laid out on the beach and there was caviar and Maine lobster that my assistant had provided. And then the finest the finest baritone opera singer from Milan was there. And he did a concerto of uh, of rigatoni raviolis, and then at sundown, a dolphin swam up into the onto the beach and let us pet it, and then we kissed. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the chick on the stand right now. Um, so I told him he could come over because I had just recently broken up with my boyfriend, and I just wanted like a friend, and he put on like this DVD. Of like some Mario Lanza, one of like the famous Italian tenors, and I was just like really confused by it. And it was on for five minutes, and then I looked over, and he was masturbating on my couch. <laughs> and then, and then he just like kind of got on top of me and started just hitting me with it. And it's like it's like as it's like as thick as a soda can. It's got kind of a big, and and then I didn't know what was going on. And then I just started crying, and I told him to get the fuck out. And then he wouldn't leave. Yeah. No, that's like totally not how it went. <laughs> First of all, it wasn't at her place. It was it was at the Ritz Carlton Santa Barbara penthouse. <laughs> oh yeah. And I had Yanni there. There is no Ritz Carlton in the San yeah. Santa Barbara. What yeah, are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, no, I mean it was like in Santa Barbara or like LA you or something. The Californian hotel. Maybe. But then like we had Yanni there like singing <laughs> opera. And I got down on one knee and I proposed to her with a thirty thousand dollar De Beers diamond ring, dude. Yanni, dude, that's hilarious, dude. Yanni would never, dude. Yanni, what the fuck? How'd that guy get huge, man? He's got the song in Step Brothers, right? I think so. Dude, Yanni, what a character. He kind of looks like a fucked up me, dude. Long hair. I'm going to be the girl on the stand. And then he just, just, something came over him and he rushed across the room and punched me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started taking his pants off. And then the lawyer would come in, ma'am, where's the proof of this violence? Uh, are there texts showing that he was threatening with violence in the past? Are there photos of this violence? And then case thrown out. Your lawyer no would proof. defend you with uh, like, wait, throw you. On. I am very close to one of the biggest district attorneys in LA, like God. very close where this, if this were a real case, because this guy's retired now, he does stuff for free for his friends, family, friends and stuff, bro, I would literally win this fucking case. Oh my God. I mean, I'm here to represent just, my client, dude, if, sexual If she ever actually filed a restraining order, 
it's just they would laugh at her because everything that she would show. I feel like his lawyer show any threat. What about the bruises on her neck? It doesn't show. (laughs) There's no proof of any past violence. No. What about your semen in her underwear? Nah, none of the. I feel like his lawyer would proof. They would always whatever evidence. His lawyer would always would like defend him with like, but like it'd be kind of like disrespectful at the same time. It'd be like, your honor, how could this man uh, be? He's outweighed by fifty pounds. How could he possibly defeat this woman in a fight? That's what I would say too. I'd be like. (laughs) Yo, like, uh, how is there any justifiable evidence showing that I'm a fucking threat? Look at Sultane, me. Sultane, you've really, me he's thought a lot person. about this. I know. Right? He's not a, Sultane, you've thought a lot about this. It seems like oh, you've yeah, gone through this Oh, yeah, because I'm ready. If this were to fucking come, like, she's going to waste so much fucking money. Her own money is she saved her mom's money. Uh-huh. Um, and also her final year of college is she's just trying to relax and chill, you know? Like, the fuck? Like, it, this could have been handled over a simple convo. And uh, that's what would be said in court as well. And then, um, yeah, it would hopefully be mediated. And hopefully I don't got to fucking sue her. But um, Mm -hmm. it might come to that. And I'd win it. I mean, this person that I'm talking about that I know has gotten people out of many DUIs. You you called him a friend. You called the attorney a friend. uh, I'm going to say friend just because. What do you talk about? When when there's a a very highly respected district attorney from Los Angeles and you at dinner, what do you guys talk about? (laughs) Um, a lot of stuff. Uh, this guy's really into art. Uh, he has like millions of dollars worth of art. And you I'm, showed him your I'm stencil. A, I'm a connoisseur <laughs> of art, and so we talk about a lot of artists because I love art. I go to art exhibits all the time. Are you still tagging? Yeah, it's actually much better now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Much better. Oh, much better. Can you show us any recent work? I don't think so. Maybe that's convenient. Uh, of course. I just I got like a. I just draw a character now, and um. Instead of proxy, I just put a, you know, it was my tag next to the characters a P, you know, because that's P, P, that's P, on oh, good. P. I gotta yeah, say this, P. you gotta show me your new tag. Uh, so my my character's just like it's like a cloud, with eyes and a mouth, and sometimes I draw him smoking like a joint. Can but I see usually it? Not a joint. It's a pretty cool character. Let me see it on your phone. I don't think I have any photos. I've just been doing it. Let know? me see it. Now, can you draw it on a piece of paper? Uh, I just have a feeling. How quickly would the Germans have euthanized this kid if he if it was Nazi Germany? You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine how? Fa- I mean, they would have had one conversation with this, with it with Saltine and just would have been like, "Yeah, that there's nothing we can do." They yeah. wouldn't have even taken the time to tattoo a number on him. No, mm-hmm. he's just he's done into a ditch. Mm-hmm. Nobody would ever hear from him again. They would have chained him to the back of one of the trains and just drug him. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, and and like maybe med, made bets on how long he w- he would stay alive. <laughs> yeah, like how many acres of farmland they would roll through before he just fucking stopped screaming. <laughs> <laughs> dude, they, it wouldn't have been good, dude, because he couldn't he couldn't even lift like he, I don't know what he could lift. You know what I mean? Can you like he, like there's jobs where it's like to work in a warehouse you got to lift like ninety pounds or yeah. something. Uh, Not hundred no, percent sure. Even in the concentration lift. camps, you needed to do work, uh, some pretty, kind of work. Pretty Wait, good at lifting. Saltine, let me see your cloud character. Uh, I don't have Of course, it. you don't have phone. your cloud character. Saltine, why, yeah. I, I don't believe oh, that you would have finished dude. this new tag you're so proud of and not taken a picture. No, because I've, I've just been practicing it in my space. You know? Pathological I mean, I've done, oh. on, I've done it on a couple, um, like, top of some buildings and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. that's about And you it. never took a photo? You never nah. got excited? I was just in the zone. I was with my friends having fun, you know? So you're either in the zone with your friends doing art or yeah. you're banging out Latinas, giving them double <laughs> orgasms. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe you raw dogged that girl. Dude, you got to be careful, man. Oh, I know, bro. He's the I, kind of guy that ends up with herpes. That's why we don't have to worry about it, dude. It's guys like Saltine that get the herp. We don't. Yo, what's up? Hey, put that on speaker. Who yeah. are you talking to? He just took a call on the podcast. Dude, put it on leave, speaker. dude. Put it on speaker. I can't, dude. He's already ended. Who was that? Just someone that's going to pick me up in a little... All right. Well, yeah. Saltine, we've had enough time. I'm a very important man. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now you, to, you can go. No, Saltine can hang out. He can hang out. We're just going to stop drilling. He was you. supposed to be a solo pod, man. And now you're so, cool. Saltine's all right, cool. We're dude. just going to stop drilling. I love you, Saltine. I, I love do. you as well. So, Thanks, Saltine, buddy. well, let's talk about this party. Let's go back to the party. The party fascinates me. The fact that there were 14 guys and one chick. <laughs> and Saltine <laughs> went like right four. Four chicks, the same ratio. Four yeah. chicks. So, yeah. Austin, where? In the four women, does Saltine's girl rank? All uh, other women suck. Be totally uh, honest. 
by the top, bro. Dude, I'm probably going to have to plead the fifth again. Oh, oh where is she at, friend. Austin? Three or four? The third or the fourth position? I mean, she's not near the top. All right. And in a pack of four, that's pretty insulting. Where was she? I mean, there's more than four chicks, but she was still in the, like, probably, like, the bottom four. Yeah. The bottom four out of how many? I don't Maybe there were eight, nine chicks there. I need you to get really, really specific right now, Austin. We're going to say there were eight women. Nice even number. Give me her ranking. Hey, maybe she didn't Three. have these fucking fang piercings. Wait, I think you said she was in the bottom. The bottom four. So she oh, was, she was number third. Asshole. No, no, let me She's do this like again. three. One bro, through man. eight, one being best, eight being worst. Where was Saltine's <laughs> chick? Five. She didn't even make it to the top half. Okay. That's lower than an F. Hey, you seem a little, I, you seem a little blown I, about that. I'm okay that. with... Yo, this chick was fine when I fucked her. Oh, my God. Yeah, there were a lot of hot chicks there. Uh, yeah. Weird. Having sex with an ugly girl is, is something me and Danny have done many a time. But... Yeah. No, no, me, it's, no. I've, a raw I've dog is different. Raw dog in a random... Yeah, hideous yeah. chick. Well, nah, she, wasn't she wasn't hideous. hideous. She wasn't hideous. But either way, <laughs> she was fine. If you had a kid with Body. that girl, boy, would that kid's life be fucked. Hey, dude. she You're... fucked up her fucking uterus, right? Yeah. So. Listen, guys. So raw dogging is reserved for a certain breed of woman. Salty, you need to listen. Hey. To this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen dude, to this. A fucking raw dogging is not for. 2 a.m. last resort hey. shitty rave pussy. I, yeah. I had a con of mommy, bro. She said she was she she wouldn't get pregnant because uh -huh. she fucking damaged her. She's gonna trap your eyes. Shit, bro. When she was seven, she had a bad injury. She's so. gonna trap your ass and that she's gonna have a Down syndrome. Kid. Nah, I mentioned because she's still her, gonna bro. do drugs when the kid's in the hey. womb, bro. And you're gonna have to raise yeah, a little yeah, Downsy yeah. kid. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Like you can only this raw dog chicks over. A you can raw social. dog exactly. Yeah, yeah, Austin's yeah. on the right Socio track. Socio and economic class. Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to. I'm being Saltine. I've been around the block, dude. Yeah. You need to listen to me like you would listen to your own father, okay? Mm -hmm. Because oh, no. if I were your father, I wouldn't let your car get reached. All that, bro. Listen to me. No interrupting. So I did a video on this. Um, you know what? I think I fucking privated it, and I really wish I didn't mm. right now because I want to watch it. Abortion. No, but Saltine, Abortion. basically, this is what you got to think about when you're having sex with girls. Abortion. Shut Plan up. B. Shut up, Saltine. It's That's more than that. It's it. more than that. It's sexually transmitted disease. You can't also, an abortion isn't your choice. So if a psycho chick, you knock hey, her up, that's, she's probably that's not going to have an abortion. That's why you talk about abortion with that chick Let before me, you fuck. But who fucking, once the baby hey. ends up in their stomach, the hormones kick in, asshole, and they start doing crazy stuff. No, no, Salty, no. listen to me. So I agree with Leo that if a chick is objectively over an eight on a pure physical level, Especially if you're drinking, I understand mm -hmm. the raw dog. Even if she's crazy, even if she's Catholic or Mexican, which is really the same thing, yeah. and she's very likely to have a baby, yeah. I get it. Because your baby that you have with her is going to be of superior genetic stock, mm. and your dad's at least going to be like, you're an asshole, so but it's fucking, worth it I get it. She's Mexican, so then it's worth it, you said. I don't know what that even means. You just Let me said continue. It. Let me continue. Ideally, to all the men out there, I'm reiterating, it was my, uh, my fucking raw dog matrix video I made long ago. Okay. The other thing you need to consider on top of sheer looks, because an eight or above is pretty rare, and I don't care how big of a stud you are, unless you're like in the top one or the top half a percent of guys, you're not going to have unlimited access to fucking eights. The rest of us mortal men, we need to think about the girl's ethnic and religious and scholastic background. Mm -hmm. Ethnic. The girls <coughs> that you can raw dog most safely are Asians. Mm. Chinese yep. girls and Japanese girls, their mothers... Mm will whack them on the head. This is what will happen. If a fucking Asian girl, Chinese or Japanese, has a baby out of wedlock, her mother will either beat the baby to death with a bamboo stick or cut its head off with a katana. That'll happen. <laughs> right? 100%. Now, I, have you noticed... I think it's it's a it's a phenomenon. I don't know that... They're not as easy to get as they used to be. Asian, Asian chicks? Girls. Yeah. The sluttiness of Asian chicks... Has reduced. It's reduced tremendously. I it, when I was at UCLA, University of California, a lot of Asians, which is what it was nicknamed mm -hmm. when I was there. 
Boy was, dude, I had a blowjob girl and another girl that I was buying. I had two Asians that I would consi- consistently put my penis into when I was uh, 19 years old at UCLA. Now, I don't know that that's the case. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I could find. I haven't found a slutty Asian in years. I don't know where they're at. That's a, that's, so Asian girls, Leo raises a good point here, too, that brings me down. So we have ethnicity, religion, scholastic background. For religion, Asian women do not have the Judeo-Christian morality hanging over their head that says sexual immorality is bad. Mm -hmm. That typically makes them more open to casual sex. And at UCLA, that's another part of my matrix here, that's a high, prestigious, blue-chip, educational fucking site. Those chicks, their self-worth is not based on them giving up their pussies. They already feel good about themselves. Therefore, they're more likely to be slutty because they have more to their self-esteem than just like whether or not they're making guys wait. Mm -hmm. And then also chicks who are smart enough to get into that school or smart enough to get tested if they have an outbreak of fucking chlamydia. So you never fucked a UCLA chick. That's not how, I don't know how you gathered that at all. You had sex with over 100 chicks at UCLA. UCLA chicks are easy. Not quite that many. How did you gather that I didn't have sex with? You said they're harder to get. No, I said said they're easier to get because a chick who has shit going on in her life her self-worth isn't tied to her vagina. Whereas a lot of chicks who were just like, eh, I'm a hot girl on Instagram. Like, eh, he wants to fuck me? No, not so fast, boy. Uh. Uh, Those chicks are the ones who were fucking harder to get. Uh. Whereas the Asian chicks who go to fucking Stanford are just like, put it in there. Put it in there. Yeah. Or they might say, like, oh, put it in there. You know, they might be like, <laughs> oh, a little bit more. Put it in there. But also Jewish chicks are good too because Jewish girls also... It's really the girls who are like conservative Christian. They're the ones who are going to have the baby where Jews also. I can see you're fucking tuning out, Saltine, but you need to learn this because you had sex with a fucking shady, very Catholic looking fucking drugged out rave whore last night. Yeah, the first rave ever for this chick. Oh, I bet. dude. Oh, (laughs) I bet. Yeah, she can't have babies. and You gave her two orgasms. (laughs) Saltine, nah, listen, definitely never been you're getting played like a fiddle. Oh, yeah. I think so. What, what else did she tell okay. you last night? Oh, you're, you're so handsome nah, and smart. None of that. Did she say you were I smart? <laughs> did she say you were intelligent? Huh? I'm just curious. Did she say that you, you use a lot of big words and stuff like that? Why do a woman like, tell you that? Because they uh, think that you're not smart, so they feel like they have to say that. Um, you know? Yeah, no, some women do actually say that, I, uh, that, they, that I'm intelligent. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think for a guy that Those. looks like me, I'm I'm up, I'm, a, I'm the upper echelon of intelligence right. for people. Who yeah, look I've like been me. told that before, not That's, by this chick. But congratulations um, for guys yeah. who look like they should be dragging a deer back to their cave. Yeah, dude, you're at yeah. least in the 51st percentile. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you guys, <laughs> you guys as well. I know. would say, yeah, I would say, yeah, I'm in, at say least you guys yeah, yeah. as well too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Saltine, yeah. you. So here's the rule, basically: girls who don't have anything, you go, fuck listen, shut up. Protected if it feels good, better. Listen to me, this other chick. Shut Stop up. interrupting. Shut up. Saltine, listen, right. listen to me. Because the thing is, you can interrupt me because you don't feel like you're learning. But yeah. the kids at home, I want them to know okay. that a chick, you can't have unprotected sex with a girl under an eight. If she's over an eight, okay. I'll make an exception. But yeah. you can only do it with girls who have shit going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shit that would be derailed if they were to have a baby with a stranger. Yes. No, right? I agree Doesn't on, that make I, sense logically? I agree on your points. I'm just saying, like, you know... Uh, I don't know. Different vibes, man. Oh, like, okay. Uh, that settles it. Uh, In that case, Rodog, whoever you want, if there yeah, are different bro. vibes. Yeah, Saltine, bro. there's something really bad's going to happen to you if you if you have sex raw dog with I don't 20, fuck every 10 more chick girls. raw dog, bro. I actually fuck a lot more with the condom. It's just... I pick and choose who I fuck. You had sex time. twice in the last in this year, bro. What are you talking about? What do you mean about? twice in the last year? You I've had told sex. Me. You had How many, sex hundreds of times? The girl you were the last time in this year. So we the girl know you for a fact. Talking about. You've you had sex with a hundred girls. You're lying. A hundred girls? No, it can be with the same chick a hundred fucking times. <laughs> what do you mean, Saltine? The girl you fucked last night was a bog monster. And listen to me, <laughs> Saltine. You got what? your you got your car repossessed in Santa Barbara. You're pretty soon. It you're gonna have. Insane, imagine bro. having your child repossessed by yeah. an organization called CPS. Well, yes. they actually have a lot. California has a lot of programs that help 
you know, people that uh, are struggling with kids. So if I end up struggling, I'll just use these oh, benefits. Oh, California yeah. Oh, yeah. That's you want to go on welfare. Yeah. You literally yeah, I'll go on welfare came if I need on to. the Leo and Danny yeah. show and told everybody you want to be on welfare. Oh, I don't want to. I said, if it comes down to it, oh. that's what would have to happen. Salty, I mean, you also said that girl had a double D chest. She did not even have big tits. I saw the picture. No, they saw them, bro. What the fuck? We all saw it. Austin, Everyone play the, the fifth house. again. Everyone in the house saw the tits. I mean, everybody, she, her tits Austin's were flashed the one that to everybody. I called him double D's. That's why I called him double D's in the first place. I was, I, was, I was lying, though. I, what D's? I don't know. Like, they're pretty big, bro. Oh, my God. Double D's nuts. I don't know, bro. Y'all seem kind of jealous because y'all didn't get play last night. So. Hey, you don't know what I did last night, cocksucker. Hey, hey, hey. It seems like it. I was hey, driving bro. around in a tsunami for some reason. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> 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 Me too. I had anal sex that. last night, so I'll with one uh, of the best asses in the so United you, States. You were thinking of a guy while you were fucking. No. Yeah, well, was it, was it Colton Underwood, dude? <laughs> it that's, why you had, that's why you did <laughs> anal, right? Because you, you should like fantasy. bang a chick and then just like while you're banging her, just call up Colton. No, oh, my he would love that, dude. <laughs> he love that. I think I'm one of the only guys from our that he's still following from the Bachelorette too. One he loves wow. you. you should fucking. We should get him in a video. So Saltine, I don't think he'd do that, but it'd be dope if we could. Saltine, basically, you are. I'll tell you. I, this. I, I do. Wait, right now you're getting restraining order rebound pussy. Yeah. <laughs> And it's making you very desperate. No, I just fucked another chick before this that I've been fucking for a week. And she was probably and even more reprehensible and I wasn't than this one. Her, bro. And and People. I should have been raw dogging with her, but I've been. Have you heard about how you up? don't you think that being humble is is a better way to get people to like you a little bit? People yeah. really liked you, and then the you know we can read some of the comments, but people don't like that you. You're acting like some guy that just is tearing up pussy all the time. Because well, I've been tearing this up pussy, saltine. bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Running from downtown. Leo and Daddy show audience, please know that on August the 20th, I went to a rave and had sex with a double D Mexican woman, and she yeah, came in twice. It, it was my first time having sex too. Yeah, I lost my virginity. Saltine, I don't. Night. Please, you don't lie right here because I'm I'm a master at telling when people are lying. I, 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 I I've been yeah. I've been studying acting for a long time, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. And acting is lying, right? Basically. Yeah. So when you're acting, I can I I know when you're faking it just yeah. a little bit. How many? Different women have you slept with in 2023? It is now, uh, it's uh, late three. August, three girls all year. Yeah. You're lying. You looked away up to your upper no, right. I, swear I know to God. it's two. It's the like, ex Nicole, the chick I fucked before this, and the girl from last night. Leo. The fuck is Leo, the problem? You're, and I could prove it, motherfucker. Leo, uh, his eyes. Oh, Did my you see God. that? Oh, I got texts and everything to prove it, but y'all don't want to see that. That's, uh, that's, yeah, we do, is, actually. That is you looking I'll up to it, God, dude. begging him, imploring him to help you get your story straight. Yeah. That's what that is when you yeah. look up into the right. Yeah. Saltine, you've had sex. I was looking up to the right because. I'm just like this motherfucker, bro. Saltine, like, you've had sex with one sewer dweller and maybe a household pet. That's all you've had sex with. Yeah, Listen, Saltine, yeah, this, sure. uh, let's think about let's let's do this. I think maybe a little less marijuana on the daily. I think you should be uh, you should be able to do 20 push-ups as a 21 year old male. I oh, know that you can't it. do 20 push-ups. <laughs> we gotta see it. Go ahead, try yeah. to do 20 push-ups right now, all I'll the way up and all the way down. Push-ups, bro. Like, go go ahead, do 20. Here, here's 20. what we're gonna do right now. Here's what we're gonna do. Everybody in this room right now has to do 20 push-ups. Yes. To see where everybody is at. Yes. I'm so hungover. Though, I Danny. don't give an s. Now watch this, Danny. Watch this. All the way up, all the way down. One. They don't have to two, be diamond. Three. Four, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. eight. He's not going to make that 20. Nine, 10, 10, 11, mm -hmm. 12, 13, uh -oh. 14. Uh -oh. No, 15, that wasn't all the way down. All the way down. 16. 16, bro. Couldn't do 20. But he, he I'm honestly pretty impressed. He was doing he di diamond. Those were, that wasn't bad, Saltan. That was better than I thought. All right. Saltine, can Four you grab off. that mic? Dino's up next. Dino's up next. I hope Dino can do 20. I think he can. Let's do vaguely like pectoral level. They don't have to yeah, be yeah, diamonds. Yeah. yeah, 90 degree angle with the arms is the the real rule. Saltine, I'm going to give Saltine 20 on that. All right. One, two. A little slower. Three, three four. four. A little slower. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18. Nice. 19. 20. Uh, you're good. You're good, you're good. You're good. 21 for good measure. His elbows were flared out a little farther than I would like, but again, I'm impressed. Did not think Dino was going to be able to hammer those out. Austin, you're you up. seem pretty nervous about this. Dude, I don't even feel like I can do one push-up right now. Come over here, buddy. so wrecked for Come on. Night. Come here, boy. Push yourself. Push yourself. Come here, boy. It's push time to do push-ups. Yourself. It's time to do push-ups. Well, well, Danny can. Leo's been eating cookies all day, so we'll see what he's got. <laughs> all right, 20. Get the pull-up bar. I'll do 20 pull-ups. No right cheating. Now. A little lower. Four, five, six, seven. Slow down. Eight, nine. Slow down. Ten. Bro. Eleven. Let him do his thing. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Let's go, nice. Austin. There we go, Austin. See, aren't you glad you believed in yourself? Or rather, we forced you. I weigh like 12 pounds. It's not hard to do push-ups. Oh, that's true. All right. All right, let's see these five push-ups. Top of Mullins up. I don't think you can do it. <coughs> Dude, by the One, way, Joe, Joe Rogan did 75. Two, that's crazy. Three, my brother spot. used to be able to do 100, like my older brother. Five, that's a lot. Six, yeah. seven, eight. He's positive. When my older brother went to jail, 10, so that's how he got good at 11, it. Eleven. It's good form, Danny. Twelve. Well, it's thirteen. You're putting the nose on the ground. 14, that's like that's like some 15, crazy shit. Sixteen. Danny's getting vascular. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. That was the like pacer an ab workout. Test. And all, all right. right. Well, I guess I have you to do it now. For your pacer fitness test only. Oh, I guess I got to do it too. Bug it. <sighs> we got to do it with the boy. Push it to the boys. The Pacer Gram with Leo DeTovio. Get it, Leo. I'm going to count it out. Guinea. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Wop. Grease. Oh, that's way faster than Austin. It's the Chips Ahoy, dude. Six. Seven. Eight. Slow down. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Deco. Sixteen. Guinea. Seventeen. Grease ball. 18, 19, parking lot blowjobs. Honestly, Leo, that was pretty impressive. You know your boy's 245. Yeah, I know. That was pretty impressive. And Thanks. expanding by the day. Wow. <laughs> Not at all, dude. I was 255 in the, uh, in the last video we did. So bulimia is <clears throat> working then, no, I guess. I lose those. I can go from like 250 to like 240 pretty quick, and then I stop. Like 240 is hard. It's hard to go from 240 to 230. Well, if you had even an ounce, <laughs> even a modicum of discipline, it wouldn't be. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, man. I'm just so fucking hungry all the time. Well, just got to fast a little bit, man. Saltine. I know you fast. Saltine, well, what do. is your diet like? It's like uh, it's so hard to keep. These just, motherfuckers forget to eat, Danny. They all forget to eat. Like Dino's like, I don't, I don't know if I ate today. Like how many times he's told me he's literally said like, uh, yeah, Dino. I don't yeah. remember my last meal. Like what? Uh, diet Salt diet changes a lot. Saltine, what do you eat? What have you eaten today? Um, what did I, oh pizza today. Yeah. Uh, it's early still. When did you eat pizza? Earlier. What time? Um. Three. Where? Downtown. A slice? Uh, a huge ass slice. From yeah. where? Uh, I forget the name. It was a new place. I, I haven't been to it. I can't believe that you today. haven't been like assaulted downtown. It was over, um, you know, the arts district where the broad is. You know, there's like a Shake Shack there. It's a little food court right next to the broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in there. It's pretty fire. Cool. Yeah. Well, saltine. I don't know if I'm ready to, I don't know if I'm prepared to talk diet with you. I don't, I don't <laughs> like how much you're. You're trying to look like, I don't know, a, a fucking replacement bassist for Led Zeppelin right now. Nah. What does this look like? Uh, you're like a fucking rap guy from Atlanta. That was the last time I saw you. Like, did I fumble or crumble? Nah. Dude, dude my homie like said, get up you there. I got that shit. <laughs> All right, well, you like this more? Or less? You got to remember he's originally like, he's, he's a fan of Jacob Couch's, dude. He's trying to do the Jacob Couch, nah. dude. You look like if John Paul Jones got sick and they needed for, somebody to come out and fucking pinch hit on the bass. <laughs> I don't know. Does it look better now? Yeah, it looks better back. Bro. I'm not saying it looks bad. It's just like a 
jarring change of styles. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I was like... It looks way better like this. I didn't... Yeah. Um, I didn't ever style my hair when I grew it out for like two, three years. I just let it grow out, didn't cut it, nothing. Uh-huh. And I was like, man, that shit's fucked because my, my top, my head hair, like on the top, was the same length as my back. You know, I just, I, just I, I Whatever haircut makes you the least fuckable possible, I want you to get that haircut <laughs> so you don't have a baby this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dino said he, they should get yeah. the Danny Mullen fade, but dude, the Danny Man, Mullen seen, fade. With, okay, see. the Danny Mullen with right where Danny's hair that's is, would the, then faded on the sides, is one of the most popular cuts amongst it's, Latinos. Yeah, ever. The, I think it has to do with us. Dude, I think you started nowhere, it, dude. dude biggest, I've been seeing it everywhere. The, the Danny Spanish Mullen artist. fade, dude. What? Peso Pluma right now. Peso yeah, well, Pluma? Peso Pluma is, yeah. The biggest artist right now. Maids yeah. tell me I look like Peso Pluma. Dude, Peso yeah. Pluma has your exact haircut, but like with the fade Peso on the side. Peso Pluma he is, is like Mexican you? Danny Mullen. He's Mexican made, dude. If you and, um, what's that one fucking comedian all the chicks life like, uh, Rat, Matt Rat, Rife? Matt Rife. If Matt Rife and him had a kid, that's pistol. All right, we do want to talk about one thing, though, since it's evident that three people in this room are extremely... They're drug addicts. They they won't admit it yet, but they are drug addicts. Have you ever been in any way, shape, or form kind of addicted to any kind of... Would you ever... Not even... I know that you were never been addicted to a drug, but were you ever, like, inclined to be addicted to a drug? I had spells where I would smoke weed every night for two or three months, but the most destructive addiction I had was when I was in college and I was addicted to chasing pussy. That's a, that's a drug. Yeah. That was the most destructive thing in my life because getting uh, Leo tune out, cover your ears, buddy, because you're not going to like to hear this, but fucking no, it's true. I mean, chasing pussy comes at the expense of everything else you got going on in life and it's a pretty good way to stay in one place and also to not be very happy because, mm-hmm. I mean, pussy is like trying to find satisfaction through eating fruit gushers instead of eating a healthy diet of meats, fruits, and vegetables. It's a quick high, and then it's fucking gone, and you feel worse than when you ingested it. Now, when I to, to kind of say something in regards to that, though, what about, but getting zero pussy and being like a fat guy that's sitting on a couch, yeah. not it, not healthy and everything. I feel like health kind of leads to pussy because women are attracted to health. What is health? Like a guy that looks jacked, right? That is healthy. He looks like he can, cl- he can tackle a fucking deer and kill him and then bring it home to the, to the mm-hmm. cabin, you know, and feed you. That's what a woman wants, right? Or Part, yeah, part I mean, it. obviously, if you're doing things in your life that are attractive to women, that's all good. What mm-hmm. I'm talking about is I would prowl the Whole Foods aisles at noon on a Tuesday in Westwood, getting any girl with titties and ass or a halfway decent face to give me your phone number. Danny be or I'm talking about, I mean, Leo, you go into downward spirals, perhaps, of direct messages. and mm-hmm. like, DM, like, that is the kind of stuff I'm talking about that's destructive. Yeah, and it's not going to lead to happiness for sure. It's one thing to, if a girl is interested in you or you're in a social situation and you think a girl's cute to go talk to her, that's healthy. Mm-hmm. But when you're setting aside vast swaths of your week mm-hmm. to pursue pussy at the expense yeah. of doing actual stuff, yeah. it tilts over. That's the difference between having a glass of wine in a social function versus drinking a bottle of Jim Beam yeah. alone in your room. That's a fiend but now, right But like thing. incels right now all over the place are, are kind of, they probably don't ever know what it's like to get the opportunity to have. I mean, the reason you were doing that is because you were in shape. You were in a frat. You had some status at UCLA. You were, you know, you had fucking tussled with some great UFC fighters. So you had the, the, the privilege of being able to get a lot of pussy. That's the reason you were doing it. When you get to that, air, to that place, then you could worry about being depressed to get pussy. But you have to get to a point where you can get some pussy, though, because you know what happens to the guy, the opposite of where, what you're talking about? He shoots up a school, Danny. Which is it? It's not exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, it's. I mean, it wasn't the fucking end of the world. Like, it wasn't that damaging that I spent a little bit too much time going after chicks. It, it might have made you, in a way, who you are. Because what? Where do you think? Leo, you're, I, I get that you're trying uh, to. Like, I know this is. You want me to be Tony Soprano right yeah, now? And be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, cheat on your wife at the strip club. You're washing yeah, your money yeah. at. But you, no. I mean, and you have to overindulge in stuff to find the line. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's why 
a kid drinking too much at a party like Austin probably did last night and feeling like shit and being a zombie on the podcast. That's not the worst lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. You've had some good moments today, Austin. I'm fucking with you. But yeah, you have to overindulge in order to find the line. Mm. And I don't regret anything I did, but I have recalibrated now and dialed back. And I know that what I was doing wasn't good. And um, yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying too, though, but you can get in shape and have a good job and learn how to socialize with women without being like a sociopathic um, sex stalker. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm not talking about saltine level sex stalker <laughs> where the word restraining order is being thrown around. No. I'm just talking about a guy who is like repellent, like like lizard-ish, snake-like to women, who is yeah. just like, just uh, all he cares about is just like getting in their pants and then he's moving on to the next one. And I've been there and that that's a, that's a, it's a dark place, 100%. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you're 100% right. But getting to that point does show you kind of how, doesn't it kind of in a way teach you how to gather that energy and put it into something else? I mean, eventually you were able to figure out how to maybe put that kind of energy into a YouTube, a YouTube channel, right? I mean, you masturbate four times a day. But I worked hard at stuff before I ever got chicks. Mm. Like whether it was jujitsu or I don't know, school stuff that I worked on that I, I mean, to get into UCLA, that was like when I got to UCLA is when I turned into a sexual degenerate. But mm. before that, I was already applying myself to healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I don't know why I'm not like trying to like moralize right now. Mm -hmm. I just, I think it's like anything it's, it's an, it's an addiction or a, um, I don't know. Like I, I, there were times when I drank too much. I never considered myself an alcoholic, but there were times where I was like going out and getting into bar fights because I was so fucking drunk all the time. And, um, I would compare my pussy pursuit to that. Like not an addiction, but like, Hey, time to dial it back, buddy. Yeah. 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 No, I, I'm just worried that I feel like a lot of friends that I have, a lot of guys that I know that are their age are, are more and more now than ever before are becoming kind of asexual where they just yeah. don't think that, chicks are worth it they rather sit at home and yeah. i guess the porn i guess the anime i Fucking guess idiots. you know like fez legitimately is addicted to hentai porn dude mm -hmm. like it's not like fez cubed it's just it, it worries me that people devalue that and i think it's it's it, like you of course dialing it back i've had problems with that my entire life and that it, it's been an addiction that's been very harmful to me you know the the, the pussy addiction but I still sure. rather I, I still think that people need to kind of give more value to that at, when they're young because I can tell you when you talk to an older man a 40 50 year old man it seems like that is one of the greatest regrets of most 40 50 year olds is that they didn't go get go after more chicks when they were young when they still could you know because eventually yes everybody's testosterone does dip to like where you don't really need to fuck as much you know like uh D bill dawes had this joke about and he told me it's 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 because it's real like his cock is like a musket now you know yes he, he puts in the one bullet and puts all the fucking the gunpowder and he's got one shot like mm -hmm. and then it's done for a while mm -hmm. you know what i mean and the, when you get to that point it's like you you know you've lost you, you've you've kind of thrown away a gift you know on it just being stupid when you were young and, and you know, smoking weed all day. And yeah. Shit, so. so with regard to that, I, again, I think there's a balance. If you are 40 and you're like, ah, oh, pat myself on the back, Danny. Boy, you did not let one piece of pussy that wanted you walk off without getting fucked. Good for you. Oh, uh, oh, uh, American Express, um, $5,000 in yeah, credit card course, debt, yeah. and I'm living in a dingy studio apartment. That I would have more regrets about that I spent my... 30s and 20s chasing pussy versus building something what you said though about men being increasingly asexual is absolutely true um and here's i think the reason why to get to a level where let's say a girl who's like a six and a half on a scale of one through ten and of all the girls in los angeles a six and a half is like not bad a six and a half is like okay to look at maybe she has a job where she makes 40 grand a year but she's got potential to grow she has a car it's used but it's almost paid off she went to college at a state school like that's like a 6.5 do you guys feel right now saltine dino and austin do you guys feel that a girl like that if she was with you every day for a couple of months 
that she would be impressed enough with your life to date you? A, a six? 6.5, almost a seven. But she's kind of got her shit yeah, together. Yeah, probably. You think she would, like, you think I mean, she would walk into that bathroom, see the shit ring, um, <laughs> see all the shake and the weed paraphernalia all over the place, and be like, this is the guy I want to start a family with? I think it depends on the chick, man. A lot of chicks, they just don't care if you're kind of a bum. Like, fucking, what's that porn star chick we know? She, like, literally pulled that dude out of the homeless, like, center and made him... That's, that's... One. Anal princess, yeah. and she's a porn star. Hmm. And we're talking about a girl who I, I know you're a little spaced out right about now, a Austin. Six who has a minimum wage job. Like, I said she not, makes no, no, well forty k a year. No, could no, be minimum she, wage. that's just, I mean, close. She's Bro, yeah, you know, nowadays, got yeah. it all fucking. No, wrong. I don't want to hear Stop. from you yet. Shut I don't want to hear from you yet. No. But what I, the point I'm trying to make, Austin, is maybe bump it up. She's a seven and a half. Well, she's kind of got her age, shit together. Your age range is different. I'm only twenty three. That's a good point. That's like a good point. I couldn't pull a fucking thirty-year-old chick that makes that kind of money, because it should be like, "What the fuck? This I, I'm dating a kid, basically." But so an av- a quality twenty-three-year-old chick is probably either in her senior year of college or has just graduated college and is maybe thinking about career stuff. Wouldn't you? Well, the point I'm trying to make is, dude, even I around a quality chick. If we're talking about this isn't a casual hookup that we're moving into, like maybe we're feeling each other out to date. Even I still have a ton of insecurities and economically I'm doing pretty well. So what what I'm just pointing out is when I was your age and I think this applies to you guys right now, men are increasingly becoming um, there's like this um, endless adolescence that goes on where mm-hmm. guys are developing slower and slower and slower. The, the age of getting drafted into the army, being discharged and starting a family when you're 24. Y'all ain't did that. It's shit, the same bro. for women though. And that's Y'all what people do don't understand. That. Not really. It not is, really. Because these, these chicks, they're just like, did they think they're drafted? mature because they want to go fuck dudes on jets and that they have like a fucking job at JC Penney. We're not talking but about those chicks. They don't know how to cook. They just, don't, we're not, not talking about these chicks. Family. What, Austin, not, Austin, Austin, it's, every, it's guys I, like, and girls are both immature. No, no, Austin, we're not talking about the LA Instagram horse. No. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like a respectable chick that you were like that you would want to maybe be in a relationship with. The chick you that you would want to marry. A chick dude, that you though. would want to marry. Okay, so let's for, throw out the 6.5. A girl that you were really into, maybe she works a tech job and she's really into anime. She makes six figures a year. She drives a brand new Toyota Highlander mm-hmm. in great shape. Would you? Maybe she fucks you on the first night, but are you at a point in your life right now that you would feel confident about where you are and, where, and that you could date her? Yeah, I mean... I make like enough money to live in a house with my homies in LA. Like to most chicks, that's pretty cool. Like mm-hmm. I do YouTube and stuff. Like I wouldn't feel any type of insecurity at all. Any type? No, not yeah. at all. Any chick? And if a bitch has like some kind of really uptight attitude about uh, that, I'm some kind of loser. Then she's just like kind of unrealistic. Yeah, she? and I don't think, dude, you're 23. You're super fucking young, and I, I think you're doing great for where you are in life. You're way further ahead than I was when I was 23, so I'm not trying to put you down. I just think that, and this totally, dude, I didn't even kind of have my shit together at all until I was 30, and I still don't feel like I have my shit together, and I just feel like that is a new trend, guys not having it together until we're in our 30s, mm-hmm. and I feel like that probably explains why there's a lot less sex happening, and incel culture is a thing. And mm-hmm. it's not even really y'all's fault, too. It's kind of y'all got screwed over by the fact that, you know, you got men and women working now. Everybody basically makes half as much money as they used to. <laughs> this isn't like a like This isn't like a dig on women or anything. This is literally like... If you have both parents working, you only have to pay people half as much money. Like, our grandparents and stuff, they were able... The, the economy was just better. Like, you could you afford to go on dates and stuff. Like, I was talking with my mom. She's like, yeah, I understand. Like, it's probably hard for you. Like, if you wanted to go take a chick on a date or whatever, it probably takes, like, all your spending money for the week. She's like, whenever I was younger, like, that wasn't the case. Yeah, no, it was, it was different. Like, in the 60s, you could work at a, a car factory putting tires on Volkswagens, and you would have a pension and a retirement and enough money to buy a house and shit. Yeah. Economically, mm-hmm. stuff has definitely it's gotten crazy, tougher yeah. out there. I agree with that point. Uh, uh, so, now I'm 37, and, uh, you know, I've said that two times on this pod, but I can tell you, uh, like, percentage of my friends that own a home in L.A., 10%. Of my friends, you know, um, 
it's it's only and it's with the help of another working professional. The the woman they married was had some money or had a really good job and they had a good job and then they were able to buy a house. Yeah. I mean, like a fucking mortgage on, on a million dollar house right now is like eight nine thousand dollars a month, dude. Yeah. It's like who can? Th- I mean, it's it's crazy. What point of the story is? At some point, there is a maturity factor that needs to come into into play where you guys might need to smoke a little less. You know what I mean? And we, we were talking about addictions and, 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 and all that. So just to bring that back, I guess what me and Danny are kind of trying to tell you is that it's hard enough to really be successful in the world and especially in Los Angeles. All that shit, the outside fact, the, 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 the numbing yourself to the, the truth, you know, it's just not going to help long. You know, if. If I had some, like, really well-to-do chick, like Danny's saying, this, like, you know, like, ideal chick, maybe the thing I would feel most insecure about is that, like, she would think I smoke weed too much. Yeah, you do you wake up in the morning, you hit a bong hit, right? I mean, that's yeah. the first thing you do. Do you hit yeah. one in the middle of the night, too, like one of my, my most of my buddies? No, I don't uh, wake up. Dude, the, I have most of my smoke. weed, my weed fiend friends who, and I, and I know a lot of them, I grew up here, they fucking hit it about 3, 4 a.m. They're, sh- they're getting the shakes a little bit. They're yeah. sweating. And they got to hit a quick Those fucking... Those are the guys that get... T- if you get too deep into dabbing, like rad dick, like the amount of THC yeah. you're consuming versus smoking normal flour, it's like on magnitude level differences to where... Like I used to smoke a gram of wax a day. Like now I completely cut out dabs. Like I just mm-hmm. don't do them. Mm-hmm. But Austin, I'm with you, dude. Like the, it is getting so much harder. And while I think America is the best place to live and the upside the ceiling on your economic success is higher here than anywhere else the floor of economic success like the baseline kind of got your shit together have a house have a car have health insurance that has never been harder to attain yeah with you like i'm the idea of taxes when i for the first time in my life made a substantial amount of money and then the irs oh god tapped me twice on the shoulder hey give us half buddy give us half inflation Inflation, I, I, I have a bunch of jokes about this in my act right now because I think about it a lot, like how rigged the economic system is against people. Mm-hmm. And in our case, a lot of times men, because men are the ones who are expected to have their shit together economically. Inflation, the government is inflating our money at 10% every single year. Meaning if your money is just sitting in a bank account, it's losing 10% of its value every year. And in 10 years, it'll be half as valuable. That's the thing that fucking happens. And that means that simple investments like bonds and mutual funds don't even beat inflation. So you really need to like invest in fucking startups and disruptive companies, which takes like another level of fucking understanding. Mm -hmm. Jobs are scarce. Entrepreneurship is fucking hard. There's tons of competition. I fucking get it. But you just have to like accept all those challenges and be like, there's no complaining. The only thing I can do if I don't want to be a fucking loser is to push forward. Yeah. I can't just r- resign my fate to the fucking... I can't just be like Saltine crossing my fingers, banging out <laughs> Mexican girls without a condom. And be yeah. like, if I have a baby, I'll get food stamps. And, and then the state re- agencies <laughs> will take care yeah, of me. Thank, thank you. And refusing to yeah. take any advice from any... But listen, <clears throat> I, I do have some advice for... Because I've seen the next... More than what from a twenty year old, I've seen the next seventeen years of your life. Has fucked me in the ass, bro. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm not taking no advice from y'all. Don't think. Ever. Why not? Listen, all right. So, Fuck so I've seen the next seventeen years from twenty to thirty seven, and I can tell you that my friends that were that banked on a company where they didn't have like a salary position, where they were selling something, so where they the value was based on their performance. They have done. They're doing very well right now. If they if they were if they dedicated their life to this kind of to some kind of sales realm, those are the people that were able to buy homes in in L. A. Those are the people that are kind of semi getting close to retiring right now. I, I can tell you that that's if you don't know what the fuck you want to do, I think you should you should go into some some sort of sales because that seems to be it. You're not banking on somebody to give you money just like oh, I, I got a promotion today it's more like you perform you sell yeah. you make commission you can you kind of it's in your hands you you know if you want to knock on more doors if you want to if you want to approach more people on, on the sales floor that that fucking where you know even if you're selling cars whatever it is i think sales gives you a little bit more of an ability to uh, to kind of succeed by it, it by working as hard as you can, you know what I mean. Like whatever whatever you're able to do. That's what that's my advice to you guys is getting a sales job if you don't know what the fuck you want to do. One of my best jobs ever, sales. I had like four of them. Fucking love mm-hmm. that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, Interesting. You don't, I don't have know. that job anymore. What happened? I found something else that was paying me more at the time, and then mm-hmm. it stopped. Mm-hmm. You know? 
but uh, maybe I'll go back soon. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, you should, because you're going to be paying a lot of child yeah. support very soon. <laughs> dude, if you do get that girl soon. pregnant, dude, uh, hit, you should hit her up right now and tell her that you, you want to get her, uh, an, uh, you know, um, what is that? The uh, What's the pill? Did you get her the pill, dude? No, the, I told her, I was like, morning was like, after. are you sure I shouldn't get like a plan B or anything? Plan B, yeah. Did you come in her? Yeah, bro. Oh, my fuck? God. You are an asshole, Salty. You just chizzed <laughs> in that Latina. It out. What do you mean? That Latina rave going LA Latina. She was dancing on me too, when, you know, when I, Dude, when I was fucking. That was girl like, looked like a corpse dredged up out of a fucking yeah, riverbed. She, <laughs> she had like the fang, like these fucking piercings that came out the top of her. Oh, yeah. Fangs. That's the, that was the one thing I'm like, uh, I kind of got past that. Because, like, we did just mostly doggy, you know. Like, well, yeah. oh. Is that on my uh, condom, no condom matrix, I forgot to say, the one thing higher than, like, education and looks and religious background, yeah. if she's got the fang piercings in her yeah. lip, fucking rubber off, <laughs> dump in that pussy, dude. Just yeah. dump in that Leave pussy. Leave it in, dude. <laughs> yeah. Leave it in. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's, that's a green light right there, baby. <laughs> you should get an STD check. One hundred percent. I get them. Yeah. Well, you should get him so like soon. When's it? you had sex with her a couple nights ago? You got it two weeks, dude. Well, you got to wait two to three. Oh, okay. You can't just yeah. Seriously, it takes three two weeks to incubate. I know. I know. Salty, let me see your dick. No, dude. Let me see it limp. Let's I'm take tired. a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we can just we can give you no a visual. Hey, remember, Danny, when you had here. sex with the, the I had sex with a prostitute. It's one of the biggest videos of all time. Maybe you need to do that again. Is it time? Um, it's like 800, 850,000, something like that. Yeah, you know, fucking why not? Let's go. I had sex yeah. with the prostitute. We gotta go to the bunny ranch. Let's do it. We gotta dude. go to the bunny, not the chicken, the bunny. We'll bring Fez and yeah. we'll get him a hand job. He oh, didn't yeah. know that you could get a hand job at those places. Let's go, like, yeah, dude. dude. I'll write it down. I'll write it down. It's you. time to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this time, I, I'm not gonna interrupt you while you're uh, you're telling me you're inserting your cock into that woman, dude. I thought we were like improv on there. I, I always felt bad about. It. He was like telling me he was getting he was going inside of her, and I was like talking about some bullshit on the phone. But that's all right. Why are you Saltine, actually, you could come to that one. That'd be actually hilarious. Saltine, would you fuck a hooker if I paid for it? Of course you want, dude. I don't know, bro. <laughs> like, are they fucking? Tested hookers? Listen, they're oh, cleaner yeah. than whatever you fucked last night. That's asshole. exactly what I was gonna say. So much cleaner <laughs> than these chicks. Probably got a hundred body counts. Oh, okay. way more than that. Okay. They, they fuck like eight. six guys a day. Yeah. Right, you she know the the, the, the Mexican eight. chick that uh, Saltine had sex with. I'm gonna describe her as okay. People will kind of I think correlate. They'll understand what I'm talking about. You know those Mexican chicks that go to like rock concerts and wear vans with high black socks. And kind of, they're pretty, they're whitewashed. They're not like, they're like Latinas born here in LA. They're kind of like the, and then they have the gothic Latina look. It was one of those chicks. Yeah. He chizzed in her. Yeah. Um, what are the chances that he has chlamydia? High. Yeah. Gonorrhea, pretty well, high. It's coming back. counts eight, so I think I'm chilling, bro. And is, she, that, is that, that women? Been, she is that women that you're half, no longer so legally six, allowed to be within 100 yards of? It could of? be 16. <laughs> is that but, uh, eight of those? Nah. Uh, <laughs> Salty, we better wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, I gotta get to up, a, I gotta get to a, a, the gym, um, and Austin's about to keel over if we don't wrap it up soon. Are you going? Uh, are you gonna go roll? Go I'm gonna go roll. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm gonna go fuck somebody up, dude. Let's go, dude. Oh, Salty, yep, yeah. That's Sorry, the police. Call take the call. Take the call. Dude. It's okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, hello. Is this Yo, is this Mr. Teen? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna need you to come down okay. to the uh, the Santa Barbara yeah, County like station. Music. Yeah. We, we've got a okay. we've got a call from a. A young Venezuelan woman who says you've been rapping on her her uh, bedroom window at midnight and, <laughs> and it's uh, pressing your erect penis against it, yeah. screaming, "I need you! I you still love you!" Helicopter with my dick in front of the window, yeah. Oh, oh man, check yeah. out the uh, Leon friends on the Patreon. <laughs> well, uh, we've been having a lot of fun. Uh, Eddie's been on the show. Uh, last week we had, we went in a deep dive with Fez Cube. It was very interesting. The kid. Uh, it needs my help. It needs our help. Um, and we call fans on there every week, so you can we call do. into the show if you join. We do. Uh, if you join, I, you will more than likely get a chance to talk to me live on the air. Not Yeah, live on the air. Unless you say an insane amount of N-words, you will still uh, you will hear your voice and be happy that you made the show. So um, check it out. Yeah, we do a call-in show every week, plus uh, the Leo and Friends podcast. So there's two shows on there, and there's a, a shitload of... Uh, uh, episodes with Danny from back in the day. We did so many of those. So uh, check them out. And we'll see you soon. Peace.